Well, hello, everyone. What up, my fellow challenge or, in this case, survivor lovers? I cannot do the usual introduction because for the first time in the history of this podcast, we're not here to talk about the challenge. We're here to talk about survivors. So if you just, you know, the automatic downloads, this popped up, you clicked on it, you clicked play. I don't know what you're looking for. If you're looking for the last recap of Challenge USA 2 or whatever, go back one, go forward one. But this is a survivor preview because this podcast is now a challenge slash survivor podcast. And even more exciting than the fact that we're covering a new show is that I've now said we multiple times and in past episodes, all 186 of them or whatever there's been, whenever I've said we, it's because I feel weird just saying I, even though it's always I and not we, it's just me there. But today there's an actual we, you're getting two hosts, two people. It's not just going to be me talking about this show. I am joined by the one and only Tony Lance from the Challenge Fandom Podcast. You may be familiar, and if you're not, you should be. I've definitely <laughs> talked about them many times before. We've collaborated before on challenge-related content, and Tony being the we're going to talk if I'm allowed to call you a survivor historian, even sure. Uh, I will I will take the mantle. Yeah, well, being the survivor historian that you are, uh, I needed someone to come on and co-host because I wanna I wanna talk about Survivor. So we're getting together. We're gonna cover Survivor. How are you doing, Tony? Thanks so much for being here. Being the first official, you're technically you're the fourth ever guest, fifth ever wow. guest. There's only been in 186 episodes, there's only been a guest on four of the episodes. Shout out to Dan Setzler, Connor Curran, Paige, and uh, Mike Lewis. Uh, those four have been the only four. So you are the fifth ever guest and the first ever official co-host for a whole season. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, man. I mean, as you can tell, I've got the uh, the Stay Loco uh, sticker over there. I've got my Stuff My Torch Jeffrey uh piece of parchment to my right as well as the survivor rules up yonder so i am i am definitely i think qualified uh <laughs> to join on but yeah i i mean i was a survivor fan first i from the beginning i remember the finale of season one i was traveling with my family and this was like worst case scenario because I wasn't going to be able to see the finale that we had watched all season. This was like, yeah, sure. It was recorded on the VCR at yeah. home, <laughs> but we were going to be gone for a while. And I mean, there wasn't necessarily the internet to spoil me on it, but that's a long time to not know who won something when you're super invested in it. Luckily the family's house that we went to, it was, uh, they were big fans too. So we like went to the grocery store and like stocked up on all the snacks. We all settled down and we watched the finale to season one. And I mean, like I was hooked from the very beginning, but that's such like a strong core memory for me of like, of active television watching rather than just watching whatever's on because it's on. And really I only missed, I missed a couple seasons when I was in college cause I was in Vancouver. I didn't have cable. I came back when i came back uh heroes versus villains was on and okay. that was my first taste of coming back to survivor and what a way to come back to survivor uh, yeah uh, yeah um quick question sorry sure. to ask this right from the start but <laughs> how old were you during the first season i think i was 13 it's 2001 yeah i think it was or no, 13. 2000, 2000, 2000 survivors in 2000, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I survivors timeline only goes off of as many things. And I promise I'm not going to reference the challenge every 10 seconds while covering survivor. I swear I won't do it, but I think of the timeline off of the challenges timeline because the challenge was first and it's the only time of I'll course. say this, but, uh, it was the challenge 2000 was airing about at the time, right after the survivor premiere, um, when reality TV really blew up because, uh, people yeah. were not watching the challenge on MTV in any way the way they eventually became watching survivor on CBS. And I too was, I was there for the first season. I was 10 or 10 or 11. If it was in 2000, I was 10, but I do remember that like I watched it live. 
I remember him falling in the fire. I remember how like I'd never really seen anything like scary on TV like that before. Yeah. Because I'd still at that point hadn't even seen any like really bad sports injuries yet. Uh, it was right before an unfortunate string of really bad sports injuries, but it was like the first time I remember both being invested in something and then being like really scared by something yeah. on TV. And like my dad watched it kind of watched it with me or like my mom and dad both would kind of like pop in or out and like, uh, more, mostly checking because it was the first season to be like, this is like family friendly and CBS and like, it's my 10 year old is super invested in this. That's okay. Right. Uh, but being like, what, like, did that guy just die? Like, are they allowed to show someone die? I think I remember asking, are they like allowed to show someone dying on TV? Cause I think like that guy might've just died. Um, and so I too was there from the beginning, but I took a way longer break than you did for sure. Uh, I probably stopped. I watched what season was all stars. Was that 15? All stars was, um, season eight. Like you mean like all stars, like the first time they did all stars. Yeah. Where like season eight came back season eight, man. Okay. Was there two all star seasons? Uh, there would have been like, there was all stars and then you would have got like heroes versus villains. And then like redemption. I like, Okay, yeah. so I dropped out sooner than I was even thinking because I was thinking <laughs> that All Star season was like in the teens. Um, well, you would have got because that... Scoopin fell in the fire in season two, so you would have got season one and two. Memory down. right there. There you go. <laughs> yes. Um, and then Africa was where they actually had to like stand guard outside their like their camp because of lions. Um, that was the moment for yeah, me, like, TV despite so much wi- more wild back <laughs> right? in the day. <laughs> so Sarah, like Sarah wasn't a huge fan of Survivor. She got into it a little bit when um, Heroes, Healers, Hustlers was on because I was watching it in the apartment. But Ghost Island was the first one that she truly watched. And when we went back and did a rewatch for season 40, even after watching like all of the seasons, season three is still her favorite. Wow. Okay. With Africa. I think she's far from alone from what I've come to assess from the survivor fandom of uh, there's a handful of the really early seasons that truly still stand the test of time and are still super people's favorites. But so I was, yeah, out around, I know I watched all stars live. And then at some point in the season or two after that, I kind of fell off in high school, college, whatnot. And then in adulthood, I knew I still really liked Survivor without watching yeah. it. I knew I was just like, it's still an amazing show. It's still an incredible concept. I still would love to be on there. I just don't, I'm not watching it at the moment. And then yeah. when they started showing, having a couple Survivor folks show up on the challenge, I was like, I want to know about these people. And I've always, you know, wanted to rewatch Survivor anyways and feel like, you know, it's going to be amazing when I sit down and watch all these seasons I've never watched of the show that I know I love. And so I started just watching, going back and watching season, like Jay's season that he and Michaela are both on, which is really helpful that that, then Michaela has now come out of that into challenge stardom here of late. Um, And I went back and watched Michelle's seasons. And then I watched a handful of them and then started watching the, I watched the season 40 finale live. I like caught up right. on the season and watched the finale live. And then I've been watching all of quote unquote modern survivors since live. And uh, the last couple seasons have been covering it. Just not here on this podcast. I've been covering it over with my good friend Paige on most likely two, which for this season, obviously uh, as we've kind of stated without stating here, Tony and I will be covering survivor here for all season 45 here on the challenge historian podcast feed. Uh, We are taking name suggestions for names for what this version, this uh, it just, (laughs) you know, survivor episode, whatever recap title. Great. Um, But if we should probably not call it the challenge historian on these given nights. So if you have any suggestions, hit me up, let me know, Um, but it'll just be here. Paige might actually join. This is a surprise maybe to you. Not right now. She's not here in the Zoom, but will likely join us for a few episodes at some point during the season. Um, So she may be popping in here with us as well, but uh, otherwise we won't be covering it on her feed, at least for the beginning of the season. We'll see. It depends on, maybe depends on how the season is going. You might get me in two different places doing survivor talk, but one way or the other, we will be here every week all throughout the season. 
And so for today, we are going to break down. Uh, we've kind of covered a little bit of our, you know, our own individual fandoms. We're going to talk maybe a little more about that and a little bit about the modern survivor, survivor 41 and on the, you know, what kind of likes, dislikes, things of that nature before we get into uh, as much of a season preview as can be done because survivor is one, you know, with the brand new cast, there's a lot to be learned, a lot to talk about, but ultimately we don't know too much about these people other than some little bios and some snippet videos. And we don't know right before we came online, Tony and I were talking about how survivor does a good job with their trailer of not giving a lot of things away. So there, you know, some general assessments, some general hopes and wishes for the season, but all in all, a basically a preview of sorts of what this podcast collaboration will be bringing you and what this season of survivor will be bringing you. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let's kick things off by, you know, I think we've covered our own individual fandom enough with the final question. I will quickly ask though. I did ask right at the very beginning, but are we, are we going to go ahead? Cause I actually do have you saved as survivor historian uh, <laughs> in a couple documents here already. So um, we'll, we're, I'm just going to pass that, that moniker to you, I guess, for, for the time being for the next 10 weeks, 15 weeks, how, how many episodes is a survivor season? Uh, what is it usually like 13, 15? Yeah. They're, they're the ones they do odd numbers. They're like the only one I feel like that does odd number episodes. Well, they I think they used to do that. Like time. they used to do that, like recap one in the middle where they would do kind of like, a the first 17 days or whatever. That was a little frustrating, I will admit, on the rewatch when I, in the throes of the pandemic, really went deep on like, <laughs> let's watch two or three seasons in the next week. And yeah. I would get to that the first time I like came across one of those episodes and I just, you know, hit next episode and was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I don't need this, <laughs> Jeff. I've watched the last six episodes in the last six hours. Okay. You can, you can cut these out. It makes sense when you're watching week by week, but uh, not so much when you're watching literally binge style all in a row. Oh yeah. Um, we were, we were in the pandemic and we were pregnant with Malcolm when we did our rewatch. So like we literally had nothing to do. We, were just what like binging survivor i was working remotely i'd come upstairs for lunch we'd watch an episode of survivor i had <laughs> come up on my break we'd crack another 15 minutes out for survivor so we really powered through it how many times do you think what season have you watched the most and how many times have you watched any season more than twice yes um so probably i would have to say philippines caramoan Millennials versus Gen Xers and Ghost Island are the ones that I've seen the most of. Millennials Um, versus Gen X is Jay and Michaela's season, right? And who won that season? Uh, That was Adam Klein. Adam, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That I've probably watched the most because, or I'm a huge Malcolm fan. Obviously, my son's name is Malcolm. Um, Not not completely because of, but not not because of it helped yeah (laughs) um yeah it definitely helped but yeah he like so i watched philippines and i watched caramoan and i've watched those a couple of times despite the fact that michaela and aubrey and malcolm are all on a season together i still find it very hard to watch game changers um because malcolm got ousted at the same time that whispering at tribal council was started all by jt um so I have a little bit of resentment there, but it's also a good season. Okay. Okay. That's actually a really good segue then because into modern survivor, AKA yeah. season 41 and on, uh, where a lot of things have changed and changing moments like the one you just referenced of like the first time we could ever have a quote unquote live tribal and be whispering mm-hmm. to each other, get up and talk changes like that, obviously change the game for, in a massive way, changed the yeah. television show product in a massive way. And there's been a lot of those in this new modern survivor. So I would say the biggest, uh, the, the most obvious change is 26 days versus 39 days. So let's start there to kind of keep building upon our survivor fandoms or what are, what types yeah. of survivor fans we are so that those listening will have some idea of maybe where we lean and everything being the first time they're chatting survivor with us. Uh, the first big change of 39 to 26 days, thoughts, feelings, opinions on 
that because that is obviously the biggest change and the most divisive one in within the fandom. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't mind it. Um, I understand the why. And I think that helps is knowing that because it's 26 versus 39, I'm getting Survivor again. Then that's going to be a good thing for me. Um, I also understand that sort of the mental game, they're able to play a much stronger mental game than some people were by the time that they got to day 39, um, simply because they, they haven't been out there as long. And I don't think that you can take away from the fact that they haven't been out there long or the fact that like, it's a different game now as well. Um, I just watched an episode of ghost Island where Wendell finished his slide puzzle and stood back and then Laurel called for probes and she won. He had it done first, <laughs> but he didn't say he didn't get probes to come over and look at it because he, that's just where he was mentally in the game is like, he looked at it, he was done and he stood back, but he didn't <laughs> call it out. And that's part of it. And that could have been a game ending move just by not having the mental resolve to say, Hey, probes, I'm done my puzzle. And like, I, you don't necessarily see that in 26 days of gameplay. Now they've, they've ramped it up in other aspects as far as advantages and everything like that, which we'll probably get into quite shortly. Um, I understand the argument that they're not playing like quote unquote true survivor, but you're on an island, you're competing against other people for the same prize money. I think you are playing survivor, you're playing a different version of the game, but it doesn't detract from what they've been able to do in 26 days versus what like a Tyson or a Dom or a Wendell or whoever was able to do in 39. Yeah, certainly. I'm mostly with you. Mostly that like, obviously we get it why it happened first because of COVID and having to find a way to film during COVID and what was the best possible way to do it. And that they were already behind schedule. And so just all the factors that led to them saying, we do it in Fiji because that's the easiest place to, you know, the one we're most comfortable in. We yeah. make it way shorter. We make it different. And the moment they do it, I then also understand why every season since has turned into from a business standpoint, it's really easy for them in the operation in the incredible operation that they run can actually be its most incredible version when they say yeah. we're filming two seasons in a row in back to back. They're both in Fiji. They're both in the exact same locations They're using, you know, more or less all of the same equipment props. We don't have to build as much because we can repurpose things much easier for the challenges and everything else. We can use, you know, really go crazy with the uh, tribal council stage and set and everything because the bones of it, you know, are just there and we're building it and we're going to use it over and over. We have, you know, the the locals that we need to hire for to be on the staff, like the staff is all filled out. Every reason why it's just now the show from season 41 to now this 45 and 46 that has already been filmed and is in the can as well. It cost I don't know the actual numbers, but I would guess cost them at half as much at best, uh, maybe even less than that, maybe like 30 or 40% as much as other seasons would when you remove yeah. all the scouting and pre-production work, when you remove all the stuff they have to make, when you take a third of the length of the time frame off, all of that. And so I totally understand that like, hey, from a business decision, when you know, back in the first couple seasons of Survivor, cable television ruled, 20 million people watched this show for at different times, down to today, where it's like, hey, Survivor doesn't make CBS or Paramount, the head company, you know, millions yeah. and millions of dollars, you know, just cash hand over fist. And it still is profitable. It's still good. It's still a great product for them. Ratings relative to other television, it still does incredibly well. It is definitely the ratings king, I think, of reality television, or reality competition television. Um, I think it's over Big Brother. I, I Someone DM me and tell me if I'm way wrong on that. Um, but I'm, I think that's true. And But because of that, like, it doesn't make nearly as much it would make more sense for this thing to continue going forever, which clearly Jeff Probst wants to do this forever. <laughs> they would be like, Hey, there's a really efficient way to run this thing and still be able to produce a new version of this. And so I totally understand it. I'm okay with it. And I at least appreciate that they 
there's like a clean break. You can, as you said, it's a different thing. You're playing a different game. That's kind of based on all the same rules, but there's a clean break and you can easily say so-and-so won a modern season. So-and-so won, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, a former season, unlike a show like the challenge where it's like, it has changed dramatically, but it's been this like long transition in each part. Yeah. You can't clearly say like, oh, before it was like a sport or after it was a sport or whatever. It's like, well, that kind of happened over a long time. So like you'd have to say an individual season and I would tell you what's that final like, what does that win stand up yeah, to this other exactly. one or anything like that. This one's at least clean. I, I side with the older players that are like, you know, 26 days is so easy compared to 39. It definitely sounds way easier. I don't know. It all sounds really hard, but I would, yeah. Taking a third of the days off does make it a lot easier. Although how long did the, was it you or someone else that I was talking to? I think maybe when I was back on the challenge fandom pod, the last time, uh, met told me how long the challenge or challenge, uh, survivor Australia is. Um, Oh yeah. It's like, it's a ridiculous number of days, um, like 70 something days or something, like something crazy, something like that. Yeah. And like there are other, there are other versions of survivor that go on even longer than that. Um, so it's like, it's incredible what Australian survivor is 50 day, previously 55, 50 in the most recent season or something to that nature. So, but yeah, like, yeah unbelievable unbelievable right. so you know we've always been playing the softer version over here compared to australia at least. but <laughs> uh so it's a little softer it's a little easier it's way shorter and you know if i was a former winner or just on one of the older seasons i would complain and call the new people you know like you're not it's not as hard to because it's not but there's nothing they could have done about it either and it is a different game and i think takes a slightly altered skill set the same skill set yeah. but kind of weighted a little bit differently and i like the point you made of you know there was some times where the whole like you're so tired you're like basically not even a human being by day 30 yeah. 35 39 well like it's nice that they can actually still think one thing i comment right. on every season of this modern season is every tribal council i'm just like are none of these people like, how is no one tired? <laughs> how is, how is everyone seem like, it seems like it's day one in all yeah. the tribals. And that's always the part that blows me away about the recent season. I'm just like, it doesn't seem like there was only one time that I can remember in 41 to now. And it was uh Gabler. There was like one episode where it was like Gabler, like can't move. Like Gabler's just right. done. He's tired. He's the old guy or whatever. And I was like, I, it, why, how is everyone not like that all the time? Yeah. Um, and then the, like the next episode, he was good again, but it was when he put the palm fronds on his uh, on teammates Sammy. while they were sleeping. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was fantastic. Uh, the champion Gabler. Yeah. <laughs> he is. But yeah, so that always blows me away, but it is to your point, a good thing for them, their ability to play the game and think and, you know, not pass out or be on the verge of passing out at every single moment. So that is what it is. What do you think then the second part of that big change though, has been that it's in Fiji every season and this season is going to be in Fiji as is 46. They were both filmed there and all indications point to them never not filming in Fiji again. I would, I would, if someone wanted to bet, will they ever film another season, not in Fiji? I would take, yes, they will film somewhere else someday. One time, at least I would take that bet, but it seems like it's Fiji for the foreseeable extended future. So how do you feel? And are you tired yet on now? Let's see one, two, three, four, five. This will be our fifth season in a row of being in Fiji are you tired of the scenery yet? Do you miss the days of globe trotting to other locales? Um, I'm hit or miss on it. I like I liked when you were getting new seasons, like at the finale, and you were going to see like where they're going to be next. Because even though they did film back to back seasons from like 19 forward, where they filmed two in um, like in the same area. And they bounced around a bit like I think they went back to Samoa for like two chunks of two, but for the most part they've been, I think it's been since Millennials versus Gen Xers actually that they've been like located in Fiji, but they've really set up like their base of operations, they essentially have like an entire village of their entire crew and medical and everybody who builds all the 
challenges, everything like that. Like, I like it because the fact that they're there, the fact that they're stationed there, they don't have to think about moving things somewhere else. That allows them to do these huge, extravagant challenges. And, like, I'm a sucker for a drone shot, as is Rick. And <laughs> he, uh, he was always talking about it on the season that we covered on Challenge Fandom. So I now make note of it every single time it happens. But the challenges are so interesting to see and they put so much work into them. And I think it's because they're, they have a central location now. And I like that they use the same beaches because I like that you can, if you're somebody who watches the show season after season, you get to know where everything is and you get to know, like that's on that beach and you know who played there. And like, you know, that for example, um, David Wright, like it was David, Adam, and Jay, after they played, they went back to Fiji and David actually hid an immune, a fake immunity idol on one of the beaches with the intention of if he ever played again, then he would be able to go dig it up. Um, he did play again, did not go find it because he didn't want to anger the, the survivor gods as it were. Um, Lame. but the fact, Do it. the fact it's that amazing. somewhere, but the fact that somewhere on one of these beaches, a fake idol that's already made that david wright made yeah and it's just there that somebody could accidentally dig up not have to i don't know if he made a clue with it but they could he could not have a clue with it dig it up and be like is this the new era where you don't get a clue and you don't know if it's real or fake until you play it um so it's to me it's interesting i like that aspect of it i like that we can see landmarks that if you pay attention to the seasons you can pick those out um yeah i think it Fiji is now a character. Mm -hmm. That is definitely the optimistic way to look at it. And I think those are all true points. And certainly you hit on most of, there's a lot of pros that come with it. And the biggest one is, well, you said, you know, like us as the fans can kind of recognize certain yeah. things and certain markings. That's all really cool. But the fact that the, the production team, specifically the camera crew, they ca they know how to capture everything because that's yeah. the hardest. One of the most amazing things of what they do is the fact that they do capture all of this stuff and you never see really, I don't, another camera person like in the background or anything, yeah. you know, like you're not, obviously the, the cast members do and are well aware that the cameras are there and everything, but like we never like see that. And that is one of the hardest parts when going location to location is that cast members can find places where they can either get away from the cameras or where you're just like, we didn't think every inch of this beach, all three of these beaches <laughs> through. And so now like they keep meeting over here and we don't have like a good angle to get a shot. So one of us has to like walk right up into their faces and it's not as like good or whatever. And so the fact that I am confident by this point in 45, like, they have every inch of this covered. They know the yeah. angles. They know if someone's walking here, this is the route you take. This is that we call these two cameras over whatever. Like they have it all covered. And that's really great that we know we will not miss anything ever on, you know, the show while they're there. And then, yeah, all the benefits it brings the actual production member, I'm sure it makes their lives way better and wonderful. The only downside, the only thing I don't like is as much as it's fun to like recognize areas and landmarks and things, yeah. it also does get a little boring sometimes now for me. And specifically if the first journey of season 45 is them going and walking up that one Hill, it's beautiful. It's stunning. I would, I would pay a lot of money just to go on that hike up that. Like it's unbelievable. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, but I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the 32nd montage of like 12 different threesomes <laughs> of people walk up that Hill to the top. And every single time they also seemingly don't talk on that walk because that we yeah. like, that's like the most famous journey for no talking is had, or if it is, we're not going to show you any, it's just them getting to the beach. And then now they're at the top and they're going to go spin a wheel and make a, you know, risk reward decision. And I'm like, I need, I know there's small little islands you're on. There's got to be, there's got to be another place. And last season they did introduce the couple, yeah, uh, the like one the where they had to walk, bar. like wade through the water, like out to the big rock or whatever. Yeah. I was like, that's like difficult. Like I know the others had to hike up the, like it looked, you know, it's all difficult when you haven't eaten or slept or anything, but <laughs> like the wading through the water and stuff, I was like, man, that's, that's tough. I'd be pissed. Well, I they had a rope journey too. a little bit. Yeah. Like they had that rope that they were using as a guide. And I was like, that's how you know it's tough is they didn't yeah. just say you go over there. And it was like, yeah. make sure to hold on to that rope. So I, I'm definitely lean on the, like I'm pining for them to 
maybe pick like you don't have to start going to a new place every season again, but yeah, maybe build uh what you've built in Fiji, build it in two other spots and you know, have like a little bit of a rotation that could be had then. I I really doubt it's ever going to happen. I I legitimately think we're gonna see through Survivor 50 on the shores of Fiji. And maybe, yeah. maybe after 50, they would do a season of some big returners or something somewhere else. But honestly, if they do a returning season, that I'd see there being more reason for them to then do it in Fiji um, for, yeah, because they would all then have such familiarity with it, which would be an interesting twist on it. And speaking of twists, then the last part of Modern Survivor then has obviously been the, as much as the the day's, and the same location really hasn't been that polarizing. I think most yeah. people are pretty in agreement on like basically everything we just said of like, there's lots of reasons it works and it's honestly not going to, the the negatives of it aren't going to like bother anyone too, too much. Right. The day change bothered people a good amount or some people a good amount. But the thing that bothers people the most or seems to bother people the most is that there used to be a few idols here and there. And then yeah. there was a few seasons where they like really upped it and idols or exile, or, you know, a little bit bigger of a format shift came into play and was maybe tepid response. And then we got modern survivor now with there's going to be eight idols in circulation at any given moment. And three of them are fake. And two of them are fake that we installed. And two of them are fake that they just made on their own with shit at the beach. And we're in the land where last season I think we hit the new normal of yeah. not just that there is so many of these twists and so many different things going on, but that the cast knows it and knows what all the new ones are. And so we had moments in 44, like where they did, they, tr everyone traded. Cause they were like, it's day, whatever. We think there might be a beware advantage. And we just think this person might have it. And it was like, yep. Beware advantage hasn't been introduced. That person doesn't have anything, but you're just like in this world where now, all the people have watched enough of these new seasons that they're like, you know, there's all these advantages. So it things like Jamie ends up giving away her thankfully fake idol on yeah. you know, 44 and it walks away because they changed stuff. Cause they were beware of the beware advantage when it didn't exist. So we've reached yeah. that peak of like, they all know about it. They're all expecting it. Us as fans, whether we like it or not are expecting there to be, just chaos at every turn. They seem to want to make every episode like really, really, really turn up the strategy and the drama of you never, they, I think their real goal is you never know who's going to go home at the end yeah. until the votes are read, which is in theory, a great goal. Uh, I definitely don't always love the methods of which they get to said goal. Um, so what are your overall feelings on the number of twists and idols and advantages in circulation these days. And are there any that either you like the most or maybe dislike the most, or there any that annoy you the most? So I, to go back to your point about how the camera people are really able to capture everything. Now, when you said that, my mind immediately went to when Jay found the fake hidden immunity idol He's walking with Ken and David, and then they do like a cutaway shot of the coconut with the fake painting on it. And then it goes back to Jay and he clocks it and they're walking. But like you can tell that the footage of the coconut was put in after the fact. Whereas in 43, you have everybody running through looking for the advantage and everybody is walking by that one tree and like <laughs> missing it every single time. But the can the fact that the camera person is catching everybody missing it, but nobody acknowledges that it's probably where the camera person is, is complete proof to your point of they know where to be in order to not be conspicuous and to still get all the shots that they need. Um, and that was that was something that like very vividly stuck out stuck out as you were you were saying that. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned it. I do remember in that was the one time in particular that I, I remember saying when covering it with page of like that, that camera doesn't seem to be super zoomed in. Like they are <laughs> like in the woods, like did no one figure that out? Like no one figured right. out that one camera member is not moving and that they seems to be kind of focused on this one general area. Um, but that's also the sort of thing that like, 
if anyone ever said in that moment, Hey, yeah. it's probably around here. There seems to be like the camera <laughs> people are all over here. It seems like it might be over here. They obviously wouldn't probably show us that moment yeah. or they would maybe be told, Hey, you're like, I'm guessing it's one of the rules. Who knows? They're like, don't reference the camera people ever, you know, <laughs> unless it's yeah. like, uh, they do the camera person does something wrong and they're like uh, literally up in your face or whatever. And you, you know, they're like, get out, get out of here or something. I don't know, but like, you're probably not supposed to reference them, but yeah. Anyways, continue with your point. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, um, so yeah. So like, as far as like the overabundance of advantages and twists and things like that, I, it gets so tedious because it really takes away from people's ability to play the game. And the people who they're casting now, especially in the new era, they're all like super fans. So they're so gung ho and they've been applying for so many years to get out and play survivor. And then they get out because of like some weird advantage that was put in the game just to be a weird advantage. Like I'm actually not a huge fan of the beware advantages at all. Um, because it really it it's more of a detriment than anything else um <clears throat> excuse me it's more of a beware than it is an advantage yeah i don't that's my least favorite too i don't like being able to steal as good of television it is to steal from someone and yeah. i think we've missed because people have like used it in in my mind incorrectly on the last couple seasons and we've missed out on a couple moments that could have been like unbelievable how did this person end up going home type of moments that yeah. would have been great television. And I get the purpose of it, but I do not like it from a game standpoint, or if I was playing the game of like that things could be taken. I like just regular idols and you can play your idol for you yeah. or someone else. I'm good with that, but I don't love the stealing of things. I mostly just like, I like regular idols and play it for someone else. And I like, risking a vote like in some way yeah. of losing your vote or gaining an extra vote i'm i'm generally okay with those those still feel like in in line with like the game that exists in my mind and we yeah. all kind of have a different version of what the game actually is in our own minds but i'm with you that the beware is like the one that stands out to me is the most like uh, it seems the, like the biggest change i guess so, like it's the most different yeah. from the others it's a it's a huge detriment too because like i'm fine with like with lose your vote if you've got like a ghost island mechanic or you've got like the ship wheel island where you risk your vote to get an advantage fine but if you're in a tribe of six players you find the beware advantage on day one and then you don't have your vote until possibly the merge and you're supposed to try to have people want to work with you when you're not even a number for them at that point because you can't vote with them and then you you eventually don't have any stake in your own game until you get to the merge and you're very unlikely to get to the merge in that case and it just like it feels like such a detriment whereas if you're risking your vote and you know that you're risking your vote and it's a vote to potentially get something else fine I get that. And I like how they did it last season where, and I forget the specific mechanics of it, but where it was a lot more of like, this is what you're risking. This is what you can potentially gain. This is how it, it works. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. Versus like if two people choose one thing and you don't, then it goes one way entirely because then it, it, it still takes it out of your hands. Um, other than like, how, how well do you know the people that you've just spent 45 minutes walking up a uh, bluff with like, yeah, there's, there's so many good ways to do it. In all honesty, because we are having so many plans come on now, I would actually love if they're going to just keep going with advantages for them to do like a second ghost Island with, the like cursed items from seasons past because everybody's a super fan. They all know what these are. They all know how they've gone wrong. And that's a perfect opportunity to put things back in the game, but do it as part of the show's theme. And I think you're going to have like a lot fewer fans who are more like annoyed by it, or they feel like it takes away, especially because there are advantages that they also remember from watching the show. Yeah, I'm with you on 
pretty much all of that. So let's go ahead then and move to actually talking about this upcoming season. Sound good yeah. to you? Okay. Absolutely. So we'll let's start with the cast breakdown. We'll get some general thoughts. It makes it makes sense to do the cast first, and then we'll do some general thoughts and hopes and the trailer and all all else. I kind of wanted to go right to discussing that it's going to be ninety minute episodes, uh, but yeah. we will save that. Let's do the cast first, so we know who we're actually talking about here. So we're going to go one by one, go through every cast member. Uh, we know as far as what we know about these people heading in, because obviously this is Survivor and it is a non-returnee season with one single exception who we will <laughs> obviously talk about. Uh, so the old, things we know about them, we've got some pictures, we've got their little bios that are put out with their questionnaire. And Tony, unlike me, did his homework and his research <laughs> and watched the different clips and some of the different footage that has been put out. I have not yet. So Either way, we're going off more or less limited uh, limited information about these people. Very. So we're going to go through one by one, and we'll each just give you know one thought or something, anything that stood out or is worth mentioning about each of these people as we go through. We'll try to keep it you know relatively short so we don't aren't here for three hours going through every single person on here. But if something did stand out about that person or any feeling, and as always with a season preview and with uh, especially with Survivor and not knowing any of these people, I will say the same thing I say about rookies on the challenge when I do previews. I especially, I will speak for myself and not Tony in this instance. Uh, I am basing a lot of this off of a photo. There's yep. a lot of opinions being made off of a photo in like three paragraphs of, of a questionnaire. <laughs> okay, so I reserve the right to be very wrong and to possibly be rude at some points uh, because if I just said everyone seems nice and I like everyone, that's, you know, not true and would be a little bit boring. Um, but uh, yeah, so when two episodes into the show, I have a completely 180 degree different opinion than what I have right now. Again, it is based off of a picture <laughs> and some sentences and paragraphs they wrote. And some of them didn't even write that much, which I actually respect. And you might find here, I like the people who wrote less. I, for some reason, I've decided that's a good thing, uh, which makes no sense because none of this will really make sense. So that's my big disclaimer. Do you want to add anything on the disclaimer front? I mean, that sounds about right. I, because we have so little to go on, I noticed after I wrote the first five or six things down, I was like, I'm mostly just commenting on who they said they identify with because yeah. I know those people's games. I don't know this person's game. So then I tried. So the first five are very much like, I like that they said this about this person, <laughs> where, whereas I got further in, I was like, okay, I am now no longer allowed to reference who they said they play like, but the same as you, like I've been wrong so many times before. Um, notoriously, when we did USA one, um, we were like, why is Love Island here? And then Love Island ended up being some of our favorite players because we had no frame of reference for them. Like they come from a dating show. Why are they on the challenge USA? But it's because they're good at what they do. Yeah, exactly. They they're entertaining and have real personalities to some degree. Uh, yep. And that isn't always the case with others entering the challenge world in recent <laughs> years. But that's that's not this podcast. These people do all seem to have some sort of personality. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll learn more about them. But yeah, I pretty much I like looked long enough to find either one thing that I could set, decide that I like them because of this, or one thing I could just for no reason be like, nah, I'm, I don't like it. I don't like yeah. this. This was a bad answer. <laughs> this is a bad thing. And again, uh, if I hope I don't think anything in here will be offensive in any way. But if you're like, hey, I like riding bikes, and you just said you don't like that person because they like riding bikes, like. We're, we're grasping at very little information here. So that's just how it's going to go. So let's yeah. kick it off. We will go, uh, you know, I always, I didn't do it this time around. Typically, I always try to reverse the order and go in reverse alphabetical order right. because I feel bad that every thousand, you know, previews of every single season, it's always in the same order. And, you know, some people are always, you know, then last and not maybe someone hasn't, isn't listening or whatever, but I was, I was lazy. So we're going to go in uh alphabetical order here, not alphabetical order. What is we're this going order, in entertainment actually? weekly order? Yeah. We're going in entertainment weekly order. Shout out entertainment weekly, which is where <laughs> uh, they do a lot of survivor coverage and they have 
There's lots of places you can, you know, look, get a cast list. But if you pull up Entertainment Weekly's Meet the Survivor 45 cast is where, and I will link it in the show notes, where it has the whole little bios um, that we are referencing here repeatedly. And then they also just have, they just dropped today and I haven't had time to watch it, but they have a what looks to be or is getting rave reviews, a little 15 minute uh, video about the casting process for this particular season and like the cast journey of, I think it's four people from this cast that, uh, is getting rave reviews on uh Twitter at least, uh, so far I've not watched it yet, but entertainment weekly seems to be your main main source for a lot of good survivor content. So that is what we're referencing. It'll be in the show notes here. Uh, if anyone wants to open it right now and follow along or get to see the pictures as we talk about these people. Well, that's the thing too, right? Like it's funny because the same list is on parade magazine with their in alphabetical order over there. But for whatever reason, because I've watched Survivor for so long, Dalton Ross is like the person for me when it comes mm -hmm. to like Survivor reporting as far as like Entertainment Weekly or anything like that. So despite the fact that it is exactly the same information, because it's all the stuff from the bio with a photo and a name, for whatever reason, I was like, yeah, well, Dalton Ross has it down. Like that's who, that's where I should be reading the exact same information with a little bit of extra flair from Dalton at the beginning. Yeah, and I... Shout out to him because the the order of names on this doesn't make sense in any, it's not like by team. It's no. not by, by name. It's, it seems to be more or less random. Uh, just happens to start with the only person with an a first name. So at first I was like, Oh, it's alphabetical order, but shout out to him for looking out for, it should not always just be alphabetical order. So there we go. Dalton did it for us. Entertainment weekly did it for us. Um, let's go through the list starting with Austin Lee Kuhn, which I need to remind myself really quick, the names of the tribes here so that I can get them and actually say them. I thought I put it in our little notes it's, here, uh, but maybe I did not. Bello is blue. It's at the bottom. Yes. Uh, okay. Bello, Bello is blue. Reba is red and Lulu is yellow. They couldn't have come up with like Bello oh, blue. Oh. Amazing. BB Reba red. Yep. Amazing. And then they were just like, that's good enough. We're going to go L with what? Like, okay. I actually wrote Y and then went back up to check and see what the letter was. Cause I just assumed it was another like alliteration based thing. And then I had to delete the Y and put in Lulu. Well, I'm not going to, for the first few episodes, I won't remember and we'll use colors. And for this yep. uh, breakdown, I'll probably also use colors. So I don't have to keep scrolling. So Austin That's is fair. on the red team, uh, Reba. And Austin Lee Kuhn, um, I will start with, he's from Chicago and that's where I live. And so one, I got, I'm going to DM him and see if he still currently resides in Chicago. And if he does, maybe we got to meet up with him, but huge points in my book. Cause I'm very Chicago proud. Uh, he, his bio is the most interesting to me of bio and photo because looking through this cast, I will mention a few different times. Not the most, again, we're judging photos. It's not the nicest thing to do, but it's what we've got here. Not the most athletic looking or appearing cast ever. And so Austin stood out as like kind of one of the athlete guys in the cast. Yeah. And, but then you find out in his bio, he was kind of like the outsider picked on during childhood, you know, had, had a tough time socially in childhood, but then now it feels like he's entering this show as like the hot young athletic guy. And so that's really interesting to me. Um, if that like becomes his kind of place socially in the game is like, well, there's like the hot young athlete guy over there, but that guy's like, uh, I got picked on like my whole life and like had braces and was really socially anxious. So like, this is a weird place for me to be that like you feel that way. So I am very, very interested in him. And the last thing I'll say is his big pet peeve is waste in any form, time, money, opportunity. And so that tells me he's also going to play hard. Like he's going to definitely yeah. be like, you know, he doesn't want to waste anything. So every, every conversation for him is going to be like, I don't care about your daughter. Um, who are you voting for and why, and why aren't you voting with me? And you know, he's not going to waste anything. So I'm in on Austin, your thoughts on Austin. I, so it's funny because you came at it from that point of view. And my thoughts on Austin is I really like him because he said that the, like, the game revolves around like forming genuine connections and that's something that he wants to really focus on. And then it, not that it contrasts with wasting time, but I feel like that's going to lead to like, if he starts talking to somebody and he's like, he knows that he's just not going to jive with them. I can feel him just being like, cool. Conversation is done I'm going over there. I'm going to talk to that person and see what they're up to. Um, so it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see how those two 
aspects of his gameplay come together. And in I will mention the first few, the ones that did stick out to me, because the people that he said that he mentioned were Jay, who came in sixth. Oh, so Wendell, now you, Jay's your who, guy, right? I know yeah, we've already Jay's uh, my guy. surmised that by uh, <laughs> yeah. commentary, but yeah, I just wanted to get that on record. Yeah, Jay's your guy. Okay, yeah, maybe Jay is the reason that I started watching Survivor because he was the first survivor to come over to the challenge. Yeah. Um, so I know that I said Jay is the reason I yeah. started watching Survivor, but I meant challenge. Watch the challenge. Um, yeah, we yeah. understood. Yeah. Um, so that was my first exposure to the challenge was Total Madness. Um, and then I went back and yeah. kind of got caught up in all that good stuff. But he's also big on both Owen and Wendell. So you've got a sixth place finisher, a fi- like a final three finisher, and a winner as your three. And I think that's a pretty good like spread because you can't win just by doing the same thing that the people who won last season do. So I think it's, it's kind of cool that he's got like a good spread of people rather than like the impulse, which is to just say, Oh, I would play like this winner, this winner and this winner. Yeah. Uh, which is <laughs> happens a lot in here. I did not do <laughs> yeah. the tallies. Of, maybe I'll do it and uh, like post it on Instagram or something, but I want to go through and tally how many times each person was said. Cause like Parvati is said like, by half of the people on yeah, here. It feels like Tony. if you're a female and you don't mention poverty in your in your bio, like you've done you maybe get kicked off the cast or something. I don't know. <laughs> She's amazing. She's a queen, whatever. But it's like, can, did any of you guys not think that everyone else would say poverty? You know? And like you'll a get, you'll like get bonus points if you say Kim, because like that's that speaks to a social game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like there there are a lot of I saw a lot of parves. I saw a lot of Tony's as well um going through i think tony might be the most mentioned yeah maybe um yeah but it would be interesting i'm i'm gonna do that at some point and then between now and the (laughs) premiere because it'll be fun and it'll also be fun to break down then there was a clear like i need a lot of people being like i need to mention one like legendary figure and then i need to mention like one person from the last three seasons or whatever to like have like a modern player um which is been was more spread out, uh, certainly, yeah. but I think Jesse was the maybe the one of the modern players that I feel I like I so, saw yeah. three or four Which, times. Uh, but otherwise, it was a little more spread out. Yeah, that's very understandable. All right, Austin, you got a lot of screen time there, and uh, as usually will happen, being at the top of this list means you're probably going to get a lot more time talked about by because an hour later from right now, I'll be like, man, this is taking too long. Uh, so <laughs> you know, lucky lucky people at the top. Now we move to D. D is also on the red team. And my only thought about D was I think she could win, but reading her bio, she came off to me as she was maybe going to be too eager to be like the big dog. And so I think she's going to be one of the first people out at the merge. That's like the first person when they get to a merge, it's like, everyone gets around and talks and is like, yeah, D's kind of been running shit at our tribe. And the other tribes are like, oh yeah, we, we saw that. And everyone decides she's, you know, the bit, the first big threat that has to go. Uh, so I, that, that was my read of her bio. She's super duper threat, but seems the eagerness is there to show that. And, uh, that, that was my read was just, I think she's going to run her team and then be one of the first out at the merge as the first person that's like, well, obviously we all should start with getting her out before we move on to anything else. See, I got like mad Desi vibes from her. Just like she's, she's a marathoner. She's like, she does CrossFit. She's in shape. She also like, she has her own business. So she's obviously got like the the brains behind the brawn and i feel like she's kind of like you said like she's either going to be pinned as a threat or she's going to very quickly see that she's going to be labeled a threat and it's just a matter of whether or not she can like lower her threat level by the time they get to the merge well i hate to say it but that's what's really hard for the female players is they have to try to lower their threat level while making sure that everybody knows that they are a quote unquote strong player so that they don't get voted out because for some reason the correlation between strong tribe means get rid of the women which is dumb but it happens it does seem to be uh i always have somewhat uh not somewhat controversial i don't know uh but uh 
I always tamp down a little bit when it comes to like the challenge when yeah. certain social aspects are like brought into the game and said like this happened because of this really horrible thing. And I'm right. usually one of the people that's like, let's take a quick step back. Cause I want to validate that the, if that's a real thing, like we, that's a real thing and should be validated, but I want to make sure I just want to be careful before we do. Uh, but survivor which I have been making the jokes all challenge USA too long of for a minute there. I was like challenge USA too, looking a lot like survivors. It's just, they're just going to let all the women go home. <laughs> like production is not going to do anything about this. We could just yeah. vote off all the women. Like what's, what is this survivor? Uh, Cause that does seem to be a reoccurring thing that keeps happening. Um, but at least on like the last season or two, it's like whipsawed then back uh, where like by like the final seven or eight, like it was even, or there was even more women, but like, it was like a hard, was it was last season that it was like five of the first six were women, but then like five of the next so, yeah. six were men. And it was like, it literally went like a hundred percent one way and then a hundred percent back. And I was, I remember halfway through last season, I was like, I think this is actually going to go so far back. And the, the ones, the women that are left are going to get so upset about this rightfully. So that like, there's going to be three women in the end, like just out of principle of like, yeah. what the hell is going on? Uh, which didn't, obviously didn't happen but uh yeah so anyways that does seem to happen and uh we'll see she definitely has her work cut out for her. that's d then we've got brandon uh and this is brandon um because we have a brando later in the uh cast breakdown here that is also brandon but is either in his regular life goes by Brando already, or was told he has to for the sake of not having <laughs> dual names on the season. So Brandon Donlin first, who I was so in on and then so out on he, this is my least favorite cast member. And let me tell you why I first was all in on him because he wanted to live up to the, the survivor writer lineage, which yes. I did not realize how strong it was. I was very aware of Mike white because yep. huge Mike white guy uh, with white Lotus. And then, you know, realized like, Oh my gosh, like he's, I haven't went, he's one of the seasons I would really like to go back and watch. And, but then reading Brandon's bio here, the, you know, you find out this huge lineage of like writers that have been on the show and either done well, or at least been, you know, interesting cast members, everything. And I was like, hell yeah, I like this guy. And then he committed a major, major sin. Tony, do you want to know what that sin is? I Now, there's one of two sins that it could be. Well, which which one do you think it is? Are you a lover of Catan and he's a hater of Catan? Yeah, what the hell, Brandon? <laughs> he said, quote, I'd rather get a root canal than play Settlers of Catan. I'm out. Brandon, <laughs> first vote, get him off of this island. Make the first chat, make the first immunity challenge individual for no reason. Just be like, teams are disbanded for a moment you all have to play settlers of Catan. and uh brandon you're the representative for your team i yeah obviously i really enjoy playing all a lot of board games but in particular settlers and uh i can't stand for this brandon so uh you're on my villain list to start the season <laughs> we'll see if you can win me back over hopefully you focus much more on the writer lineage thing than the hating the greatest board game ever invented thing um but yeah, uh, I do not like Brandon for the time being. Fair enough. Um, what was the other I, thing that you thought it might have? If it wasn't uh, in the Catan, he also the he also said that he like it was. There's another video. I think it was another Entertainment Weekly video. There've been a couple, and I think one of them was your Survivor hot takes. And he said that he was pro Edge of Extinction, and the reason being is that way if he got out, then he would have a way to potentially get back in. Um, but Edge of Extinction is a very polarizing season yes. in the world of survivor um, i haven't watched a firm... it but know all about it because of chris yep. being on us <laughs> and uh i would say generally without having watched the season i think i would like it i, I would like the idea of edge of extinction i've always liked yeah. redemption houses um for the most part if they're done appropriately which they rarely are but if they were <laughs> they would be great um so okay yeah well good so yeah good job, so good job picking yeah, I'm a I'm a firm believer in you can't blame the player for the format. So yeah, certainly. And because I mean really like if you go out and you're playing Survivor and they tell you that this is the format that you're playing, you're it's not like you're going to say, "Oh, sorry, this isn't the uh, Survivor that I would like to do." If you want to give me a callback on a different theme, uh that would be greatly appreciated. 
Yeah. I'm gonna get am I allowed to just go now. hang out at Ponderosa for a couple of days and like, you'll invite me back. Right. Like right? I, I'm going to ditch you right here and now and complicate this and you'll, you'll invite me back. Can I come back? Uh, you know, are you ever going to not go to Fiji? I've been here. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's a bit hot. Um, <laughs> it's hot here. Yeah. If you could get a more a temperate bugs. location. You guys go anywhere where there's no bugs. Like, have you ever thought about that? A season <laughs> without bugs? That'd be pretty interesting. You should do that. <laughs> now I like Brandon more than you do. Um, that's not but hard. I like him simply because he's like he seems to be like the everyman. Um, I feel that if I were to play Survivor, this is the type of Survivor that I would be slash play. Like, how going off of almost nothing at all, um, other than the fact that in one of the like they did, I watched a video on everybody's impressions of everybody else um, pregame where they're not allowed to talk. And somebody likened it to like a very high stakes nonverbal survivor uh, where they're just kind of watching everybody and getting a read on them. And Caleb so referred awkward. to him as Wayne's World. And I was like, <laughs> OK, I'm on board. <laughs> OK, so I think people are going to like him. He has amazing hair. I will say yeah, that. Yeah, he does. Amazing hair. Yeah, um, okay. well. yeah, I like that you don't like him because he doesn't like the board game that you do. And I like him because a different player likened him to a uh, two movies that i really like hey i like all these things you're saying it's just like you just he crossed the line with me you know what can i say you got i stand on my principles and my my morals and my beliefs and Catan is amazing so if you know. he would have said ticket to ride or carcassonne then i'd be right there with you i'm a little bit more forgiving on Catan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We can, um, I can get down for some ticket to ride. That's all good. All right. Let's move to, oh, also Brandon was on the yellow Lulu team as is the yes. next person. We got Emily Flippin also on yellow. You go first with your comments on Emily. Sure. So I was super worried about Emily um, at the outset because she said that she um, related to Cass who is incredibly polarizing, although I liked her, but then she said, one of the things that really stuck out to me was that the reason she will be the sole survivor is that she lacks a lot of the traditional qualities that make a good survivor player. Um, she doesn't like the outdoors. She said she's not in shape and people can find her off putting. And I was like, that does not bode well for you on a six person tribe. Um, but then I watched a video of her. I think it was the same impressions video. And then she was like super relatable and really easy to sort of glom onto as somebody who's going to be a lot of fun to watch and not because she's chaotic or anything like that, but she's just likable. So I don't know if she has a poor concept of what she puts off or whether it just so happened that she was, she was having a good day on the, uh, the impressions video, but I did a complete 180 from reading her bio and writing everything down to just watching like a 45 second clip. Yeah. Um, I, again, that situation has to be the most awkward thing ever. I can't imagine just like, I'll stand around. You're not allowed to talk, but you yeah. can like meet each other. Uh, sounds horrifying. Uh, like the hard, honestly, the hardest part of the entire game. Yeah. Um, Emily, she likes cats. So points there both cat guys here. So yep. points for that, Emily, hopefully we get some, you know, little home life pictures and video snippets at some point, And they includes your cats. Um, but then she also, she says ev for, to the answer of what is your pet peeve? She says nearly <laughs> everything you name it. And it probably irritates me. That sounds like a person I don't want to be stuck on a beach with. But it uh, also sounds like me at times. <laughs> sure. And if you can, understand that you're coming into survivor and you have to maybe yeah. like be okay with the world that you're about to inhabit for <laughs> a little bit. But if you let it be, if it, if we can tell that everything bothers you, <laughs> that I'm guessing that that's not a, that's not a way to stick around for very long on the beach. It's easier in modern survivor or six person tribes and whatnot. She would have no chance in the older version where there's way more just downtime, like hanging out laying around on the beach and time to complain about shit um but again maybe she will 
we will never, you know, maybe we'll look back and be like, you said you're annoyed by everything. You don't seem annoyed at a single thing in life. Maybe, you know, that's the person she is or the person she will be out on the yeah. beach. I don't know, but that was alarming to me <laughs> that she was openly like, yeah, I kind of get annoyed by everything. I just, uh, I I'm worried. I'm worried for you, Emily. That's all. And I hope yeah. you're not home too quickly with your cats, but at least you like cats and have cool cats. I assume at home to keep you company if you get sent home early. So that's genuine something. concern from both of us. Yes. So then we go to Brando, uh, also Brandon, but again, going by Brando, either because that's what he goes by, or he was told that he has to, can't wait to find out, uh, which one of those it is. And my only thought on Brando was I didn't get by his picture. Um, and this is where I'm going to do something that's sometimes dangerous to do, uh, which is mixed race doppelgangers. Um, but, uh, Brando, reminds me i don't know if you or anyone listening has watched the unbelievably wonderful television program primo uh by created by my guy shea serrano uh no. the the goat shea serrano four-time new york times best-selling author of wonderful hilarious wonderful books um but he created the show for ants on amazon freebie anyone can go watch it it's on like the free version of amazon not amazon prime and it's this uh you know 30 minute sitcom just very wholesome it's about a kid who lives with his mom and his five uncles um in san antonio and brando looks a lot like the star like the kid primo in the show primo uh and i love that show and i love that character and so the moment i saw his picture and i was like you like a little bit look like primo and so I'm in, I like you because I'm just going to kind of imagine that you're that character that I like playing this game, um, which is ridiculous, uh, obviously, but, um, yeah, I didn't even get to his bio. I was just like, oh, you look like that character that I really like. So I'm in, I think Brando's cool. And he seems like a sweet guy in his photo. And he's one of the younger ones. This whole cast is pretty young. Yeah. Uh, but Brando is 23, which I will scroll through while you're giving your thoughts on Brando and see if he is the youngest. Uh, but he very well may be the youngest this season. If he's not the youngest, he's like the second youngest. Um, I also like that the, uh, I just looked up Primo because I haven't seen it yet, but it's executive co-executive produced by Mike Schur, who did, yes. um, you know, all the things all, that all, are good. Literally any any good sitcom of the last 20 years Mike Schur has made, yes. Yeah, been, yeah so I will, I will definitely check that out. Yeah, Primo's um, fantastic. Everyone should go watch it. Shout out to the GOAT, Shea Serrano, always. <laughs> Uh, uh, and Brando is, it was also cause Brando Primo. And I was like, you look like, right. the, Oh, at the end of the name, um, he is tied for the youngest player this season. There is another 23 year old that we will discuss, um, coming up in a little bit drew, uh, but yeah, two 23 okay, year yeah. olds, 24, 24, 26, 28, uh, 26. So there's a lot of, a lot of folks in their twenties and then a few people a little bit older, but uh, a lot of 23 to 27 year olds in this season. Which can either be a blessing or a curse, depending on how it all unfolds. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, I mean, like, I like one of the things that really stood out to me reading the bio was that he wanted to find an alliance member who can pick up the pieces that he that he doesn't have, which I think is huge because you have to look for you have to look to be the like the most complete version of yourself. So if there's something that you know that you do not have and you can align yourself and become sort of like a power couple without being a power couple to the point where it's a threat with somebody like your Jesse's and your Cody's and like and I know that Jesse and Cody eventually did become a bit of a threat, but those sort of dynamics play really well together. I mean, the first time that I've saw it play so well that it worked all the way to the end was ghost island um but it was that sense of with dom and wendell it was the first time that i had ever seen that sense of mutually assured destruction where they reached a point in the game where they knew that they couldn't go for each other because if one went out sixth the other one was going out fifth like they the only way through was to just get to the end together and see how the the chips fell and I think that that's smart to try to find an alliance member where who really complements what you're lacking and hopefully vice versa. Yeah. And then he, that same answer. I love the second part of it that plays to exactly what you were just saying. He says 
also, if they're, they are someone I would be proud of as a winner in the era of betrayals, yeah. AKA Ricard, Shan, Jesse, Cody. I think this is important. I love the idea of thinking through, I would want to work with someone who were so good that when one of us has to betray the other, the one that gets betrayed can at least be like, well, that person's cool. And like, I'm proud yeah. to be the, you know, unfortunately in the two examples he gave, neither of them went on to win, you know, Jesse didn't win after betraying Cody and, uh, Ricard didn't win after betraying Shan, but like, if they would have that, they would have been able to be in the jury and be like, well, you think of Jesse, you also think of Cody, you know, like that'd yeah. be cool. That's a, that's an amazing thing to be thinking about in advance of like being in one of those little power couples that has to either get each other out. Like you said, around, you know, early in the merge, or at some point you're not just like stuck together because you are friends and been loyal. You're like yeah. stuck together, stuck together. Like if, <laughs> if someone gets one of you out, it's because they have the power to get both of you out and they're going yeah. to get both of you out. So Love that from Brando. He's definitely on one of my, on my favorites, early favorites list. He's also on the blue team, the first blue team yes. member. Uh, then we've got Hannah. Hannah is on the yellow team. And I had very little on Hannah to offer. I just wrote down, I don't see it. Uh, the short answers made me nervous, uh, which makes no sense compared to like the long answers that sometimes are kind of like super drawn out fake, you know, like, Obviously, I got to put answers to the test kind of answers, but I don't know. I just wanted more to read, I guess. Uh, but I didn't, nothing super stuck out to me, I guess, really either way. Uh, I was, there was nothing I was just grabbing at as like, I think I like this person based off of this random piece of information or dislike. It was, I was just kind of like, okay, Hannah's here and uh, we'll, we'll see how she is. So I, it's kind of funny that like for Brando, you were like, picture alone, I'm in. For me, Hannah Rose reminds me of Sarah Rice and I am sold for that reason. She's also a therapist and it's just like, it's, it's weird. I don't have much to base it on, but she gave me big Sarah Rice vibes. And then when I looked at her last name and it was almost rice, just two letters off. I was like, cool, I'm sold. I'm in. Um, But I did like, I liked the fact that she said that what she wants to do is push herself as much as she possibly can. And the fact that the best way to push yourself is to go on your favorite show that is Survivor, which is the ultimate push out of your comfort zone. Um, And uh, obviously she identified with Aubrey, who is one of my absolute favorite female players. So I had to go with her. But again, huge Sarah Rice vibes and just... I watched, um, I don't even know if it was necessarily the impressions video or just something that I saw with her in it, but just that personality, it's more Sarah Rice brain candy than Sarah Rice the challenge as far as just like excitement, but I totally, totally have Sarah Rice vibes on her. Love it. Uh, Love Sarah Rice. And clearly, yes, I love making really, you know, having strong feelings based off very random and fleeting and little small things. So, uh, I love that for you. And I do, I see it a little bit now that you say it, I can definitely see it too. So, uh, that is Hannah. And now we're on to the one returnee of the season. The first returnee. Uh, (laughs) Bruce is here. And obviously Bruce was on last season for a very, very short amount of time because he injured himself immediately on the open, didn't even make it to the actual beaches on the first, yeah. <laughs> whatever that you call that, you know, the, the beach out in the middle of the water, the little sandbar that they always meet on to start the season and eventually come back to a time or two. Uh, so Bruce is back. What do you think about getting Bruce being invited back first? And then do you have any thoughts on, uh, what likes or dislike for Bruce, uh, not, which we know him a tiny bit better than everyone else. Cause we did get yeah. at least a little bit of info on that first half of an episode that he was a part of last season. I mean, technically 12 hours while concussed is still more time on the beach than anybody else has had. So that's, that could be an advantage in the sense that he knows what it's like to have all of that nervous energy, just building up inside for, hitting the beach that first time being on the show that you've watched forever. Um, I like that in, in the trailer, despite the fact that he got injured on the first thing by just like going full tilt, 
the first footage that you see of Bruce is jumping off the side of a boat yelling, followed by like, I'm back, baby. Like it's he clearly has not slowed down, which I like. Um, I'm really interested to see whether people look at him as, yeah, you haven't been in the game that long. You only spent a minimal amount of time with your tribe, but you've played this game before or and I want you out. Or tell me everything you remember from your time on last season. And he's also older. Um, You had mentioned earlier there are only a few that kind of pitch higher than late 20s. So depending on the breakdowns of the tribe, I'm kind of worried about some of the older cast members. Not because I feel that they are not as competent as the rest, but perception is reality in a game like this. And I worry that the younger tribes may look at the older people as they are. This is the one thing that I can pick that isn't like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's the second oldest. He's 47, second oldest. Uh, There's a 49 year old. And I just did another scroll through everyone to look at the ages. And it was, even, it's even more pronounced than I let on before. It's like, there's two people in their forties and I think three people in their thirties, but like all young, early thirties. Yeah. And then all, all the other cast, there's like, no, they're like 28, 29 year olds either. It's like 27, 26, 23, 24, over and over and over and over. So, uh, he definitely will stand out for both of those reasons for being the one, the older person in the group. Um, even though he's a very fit, uh, 47, certainly, but yeah, I'm fat. I am fascinated is the thing I am most interested in the first episode is if people in his tribe are like, you already got to play. So like yeah. too bad, dude. And he's got to be like, I was here for, <laughs> I got a concussion 10 minutes into the game. Like not even okay. Like, you know, like that doesn't count. Like don't vote me out because I've played before. Yeah. Um, or if they're all like, yeah, you didn't really play. It's fine. Like not a not a part of our calculus or not i'm very interested to see if uh i hope there's one person who's like nope it's not fair bruce has already played i just want there to be one person who's just all like that's what they're all about is like bruce has to go he already played it's not fair and everyone else to be like dude it doesn't really make sense and him just be like nope that's what that's how what i'm going off of we don't got much that's, so that's where we go everybody seems to be jazzed that he's back um just from like the the in, the interviews and stuff that i've seen but yeah, like like you said, like I can think of the uh, Survivor All Stars, where Jenna just wanted to get everybody out who won. Yeah, they're like, you've already won. You don't need to be here. Yeah, and that's and just the that extreme single version of it, certainly. Yeah. But yeah, if he gets a little bit of that, because it's still extreme that he's the only one there who has technically played before, um, and the only person to have ever played twice in the new era. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's very true. I uh, didn't even think about that. And. It does. I I love that they brought him back right away because me too. You know, it is horrible. Um, you know, to get injured literally immediately seconds into the opening. You know, not even on your actual beach challenge thing. Um, yeah. But it does open up a little bit of a can of worms for the production of like, well, like a lot of people have got injured, and yeah. so it's one thing when it's like, you know, Matthew on last season also gets injured and has to leave the game for injury. But it's like on day, I don't know what, if it's like day 10 or 12 or whatever. Um, and, you know, he stayed for three or four days after he was injured and like, he really got to play. And so you're yeah. like, okay, sure. Like I get why you would be like, sorry if there's any hard feelings, Matthew, but like, no, you don't get the same like treatment or yeah. whatever. And uh, the way they got injured, you know, and whatever. Um, but I don't know. It was, it was a couple seasons ago. 42 Jackson? or three ja- yeah it was jackson uh yeah, was 41. The person who had like the medic medication issue yeah uh where they had like set cleared him and then decided or and then we're like never mind we can't clear you yeah. or i forget exactly what happened but yeah they got sent home you know on was it day one or was it day like two or three it was day one or two it was a matter of uh there was medication that he was on that he hadn't divulged because he was getting off of it yeah. um yeah before the show and then it just didn't my understanding if, if memory serves was he wasn't quite at the point where he would have been completely off of it. So yeah. the withdrawals, like the was withdrawal the, yeah, symptoms withdrawal. could have been dire. Yeah. It wasn't um, like you were on taking something that we like don't approve of or something. It was just like, no. simply like for like a medical reason, we think you're, it, 
it's going to be a problem for you. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, that's one where, yeah, sure. They can be like, well, you didn't divulge all this info. So, you know, a little bit on you as much as us or anything, I don't know, but it just, it, to me, it feels like it does open a little bit of a can of worms of like, uh, you brought a guy right back because he got hurt right away. And you yeah. know, what happens if that happens again, or just what kind of precedent does that set? But I, I liked Bruce a lot in the minimal time we had with him before he seems amazing and great and I'm rooting for him and I'm glad they brought him back and uh, we'll see how they handle that in the future. Then we yeah. move to Jay Maya um, as she is known with her stage name. I will not butcher her full name. I'm guessing she will likely go by Jay Maya to some degree on the I assume we'll so, see. yeah. She is on the red team and she is definitely one of my favorites from the bios. She Harvard law that she turned down to yep. pursue her dream to be a singer. And I did right. As we were first getting on the zoom, I was like, I never went and looked up uh, her music. So I haven't listened to any of it, but she does. She's got a song with 15 million streams and like five or six with like four or 5 million streams. So like a legit, you know, this isn't like a, sometimes when you have someone come on a reality show and be like, I was, I'm an athlete or I'm a singer or entertainer, this, that. And you're like, well, like, are you, or like you were like aspiring or like what level of aspiring? Like this yeah. is clearly a legitimate career singing and very, very uh, successful singing. So that's interesting. She, and just the idea that one, the, the mental fortitude to have something like get accepted into Harvard law and have that, you know, life yeah. path in front of you and be like, that's not what I want. I want to do this other thing. It's really hard and I'm going to do it and then be successful. Got a lot going for her mentally, I would say. And then she is one of the people that mentions, mentions poverty queen. She strictly says queen poverty, <laughs> uh, as I believe you're required to do so um, and should do so. Uh, but then she also says that she adores Mary Ann's game and thinks she could be very similar in how Mary Ann, you know, the, the, her personality and her level of energy was, yeah. there were some dicey moments for Mary Ann, with that, where her tribe was a little bit like, you know, kind of, kind of like, it's a little, we're all tired and you're, you know, bopping around a 12 out of 10 at all times and it's wearing on us. Um, but that she got through that and like use that to her advantage and everything. And so I like the Marianne reference and the explanation with it. And, uh, overall I was pretty in on Jay Maya. Uh, also, I guess as everyone we've now realized is pretty young, but 24. So right there in the super young crowd. What are your thoughts on Jay Maya? I same as you. Like I, I think that she will be a very interesting player. I, because I don't know her music, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm interested if anybody will recognize her. Um, or if it could be like a Mike white situation where there's like one, maybe two people who actually recognize him. Like I, I still remember when, <laughs> When Mike was shown for the very first time, just a snippet, I yelled, it's Ned Schneebly from School of <laughs> Rock. And whoever I was watching was like, what are you talking about? I was like, that's the dude from School of Rock. Then found out that he was way more involved in School of Rock than initially and mm -hmm. I knew. Uh, but huge Mike White fan. But it'll be interesting to see if anybody does know her um, and how that will play out. My only concern is she said, like, obviously, what do you what do you value in an alliance partner? She wants to work with the people that she most naturally gets along with and the people that she strongly relates to. That's all well and good. But like, what happens if they're not on your tribe? Um, how do you pivot? If that's like, if you're going in and be like, I'm gonna just line up with the people that I like. But you could get into a situation where you're not really keen on most of the people on your tribe. And how do you make it to like a swap or a merge or anything like that? If you're kind of playing from the outside in it from her bio, it sounds like she could maneuver it, but I'm, I'm interested to see how it works. Okay. So as you were saying all that, I pulled up because I had also not looked or listened to the music. And yeah. so I pulled her Spotify back up and I pulled her about, by, like her bio on Spotify yeah. up to also get a vibe of like, see if I could figure out what genre of music. And I just have to read this to you and get your in the moment reaction. And I have to quickly move this so I can see your facial reaction as I read this here. Um, 
So this is in the middle of her bio after it lists a lot. She very impressive. The Harvard stuff was just the beginning of it. Um, let's see where I want to start this part off. An avid creative, she's gained national recognition as an award-winning orator, writer, sing songwriter, and jazz vocalist. She's never let her age inhibit her goals. Driven by a deep love of wordplay, she used to compete as a teenager on the international pun circuit, where contestants create puns within five seconds on themes introduced on the spot, crowned as the international championships MVP at the age of 17. She became the youngest pun championships award winner in history. She's a, she's a master pun ishin. Like what? Like there, yeah. first off, there's a pun world championships. Like I'm getting on YouTube immediately when we're done recording. I was going to say, I feel like, like I've this, wasted my life up to this, this point. Sounds, this sounds amazing. And I can't wait to watch. And also what a fascinating thing it goes on her music that her demo was of a Greek mythology inspired pop song online where it generated millions of views. Best selling authors commend, commended the song's wit and lyricism. Music critics praised the soaring vocals and gritty sound, and then goes on and on and on. But like she wrote a Greek mythology inspired uh, music uh, to begin, and she's a pun international MVP and champion. And she might be my favorite cast member going. I was going to say, she just became my favorite cast member. Yeah, um, like what? I. I am currently reading the second series of like the Percy Jackson books, having also just finished listening to a 15 hour audio book of Stephen Fry's uh, mythos, which is all, all about Greek mythology. So as you soon as we are done early EPs, here. yeah, yeah, I'm going to be yeah. listening to that as soon as we are done because, right. and also I am an absolute sucker for in and wordplay, however they appear. So I, I, yeah, she is now very high on my list. She set the expectation for her confessionals very high right now. She did. We need some incredible commentary and wordplay in those confessionals. So uh, it's a high bar that she has set for herself. And then we move on to her teammate, Drew. Uh, Drew was, is the other, uh, we referenced earlier, is the other 23-year-old. So tied for the youngest person out there. Although I'm sure at some point, one of them will figure out who's actually the youngest of the two. Um I didn't really have anything about Drew. He seems like a nice, smart kid, and that's all I had. Nothing totally, totally stuck out for me either way. Did you have any strong opinions about Drew? He is incredibly tall now knowing that he is the youngest or one of the youngest on the show. Um, and I know that like incredibly tall is not a great <laughs> – it's not really one way or the other as far as a Survivor player. Um I like that he sort of handpicked all of the different things that he's done in his life um, as far as how that's going to prepare him for Survivor. And he's looking at all the different aspects. Uh, one of the funny things, though, is if you look at Drew and then listen to Drew, the voice up. does not match the, uh, the body I'm there. Excited. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting. And it's, it's not like, it's not a slight against Drew um, at all. It's just, no, I was not into some people. Yeah. yeah. I was actually, I was making coffee while I was watching the impressions one. Cause I knew I didn't have enough time to finish it if I paused it for any reason. So I walked away and I could hear a new voice. And when I came back, I was like, Oh, that is not at all who I anticipated being on the screen uh, to go with that voice. But he, he seems like he'll be a really interesting player. He has a really good read on the game. Um, and I, I think I think that I I think that he will do well if he can overcome what everyone's perception is going to be of him out of the gate. Mm -hmm. For sure. Is he tell me as the historian who knows who these people are here, uh Yep. Cochran, Penner, and Ryan Ulrich are three people he references. Are those yes. deep cuts or are those super well known people? Cochran won. Um he was Penner, the one I, I knew I knew the name or had heard the name. Okay. Yeah. Penner was on um Cook Islands the very first time with um like Ozzy and Yule and all of them. And he was on twenty five with um twenty five was a season where they each team had a return uh, ironically each team had a returning player who left injured on another season and came back as like not necessarily as the the 
coach or anything of the team, but just they were on each of the different tribes. Um, he's like an absolute fan favorite um, and is absolutely hilarious. And then Ryan was a um, Ryan was final three. He was uh, on Ben Dreberg in season. Okay. So not deep cuts, but at least not, not the same name. So that was the only thing yeah. I kind of noted written down. I was like, okay, well, like I only, you know, as a, not as big of a survivor person, I ref, I know one of those names by reference and I don't know the other two. So it's at least like, that's cool. Like that's at least real thought and obvious real super fan. So good for you, Drew. Thanks for giving us some new names to know. And thanks for helping me then be able to fill a little bit more history in here. And then we go to another red player. Uh, three in a row here. Again, no idea how your guy was doing this order, but I love it. The <laughs> randomness. We've got Julie. Julie is the oldest player on the season, uh, 49. So shout out to her for that. And first thing about Julie that I will say is I think she picked one of the best outfits for the season. I'm also always looking at the clothing of like, did you make a smart choice or a dumb choice yeah. here as far as the clothes that you wore? Obviously they maybe have like an extra sweatshirt or something that's not in the photo here, but a uh, big flowy pants, athletic top spot on. That's exactly what I'm trying to go for if I'm on the season. So I loved that. And I love, you know, her story is kind of the single mom that restarted her life at 40 and has found a lot of success in the last decade after kind of restarting things. Love that. She's an attorney. That's always helpful. Both. It just tells me, you know, you were, had some level of, you know, IQ to obtain that and then practiced a lot of difficult conversation and interrogations and reading people and all those things that make sense that they would translate to a game like survivor and be helpful in some form or fashion. So I'm pretty in on Julie. I have a good, I, I have good feelings about her. The only, you know, the big reservation I would have is like we said about Bruce. Um, while she similar to Bruce doesn't look 49. Like I wouldn't yeah. to, like totally guess, you know, I would, de I would definitely guess younger. Um, they will stand out even more because of how young this cast is than they maybe regularly would on a season. Right. The fact that there's only two people who I think after her and Bruce, like the next youngest I, or oldest like I saw was like 35. Yeah. Um, so like, it's a big, big gap, um, both just in being, you know, labeled as the old person or also just in like, what you're into life experiences different. Like you are a different generation than everyone else there. Uh, so I do get nervous because as you referenced a few different times, um, one of the interesting things about survivor that makes the show at times is maybe led to a couple moments that aren't as great, but it is like a microcosm of the real world. But at the same time, they're not, they don't know a lot about each other. They grasp it random things. So it does yeah. turn into at times, Hey, there's three guys and two women. Uh, I don't know. It seems like the three guys could vote out the girl or like that person's older. I don't know. Yeah. Should we vote out the old person? Like that's, a, that's something, you know, and they, it does the, the differences do get pointed out. And um, that's the beauty of the show is they do a really good job of uh, having a very diverse cast and highlighting the differences in people and the similarities in people. But it does sometimes bite some people in the butt of like, yeah, with sometimes there's a little bit of ageism at play or sexism yeah. at play or whatever that might not even be like nefarious or anything, might just be because they have no idea who to vote for. And it's like the easy thing. So that might suck, but it makes me nervous for uh for her. But otherwise, I I'm a big fan. Um, and again, the outfit thing really won me over. She doesn't get the <laughs> outfit MVP. There's uh someone coming up that gets the outfit MVP for the best the best pick of wardrobe in my mind, but uh, I do really like when someone seems to have thought about having to wear these clothes and only those clothes for up to 26 days. Yeah. I mean, it's always different when like, there've been a couple of seasons where they've been told to get ready in like their press outfits. Mm -hmm. And then those are the outfits that they have to wear. And it's, that's never... when you see like people with suit jackets and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm never listening any, you know, there's no way you're getting me to change clothes unless you tell me like you're not allowed to be on the season if you don't like change and put something else on for this photo or whatever. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm just like, no, I very planned what I was wearing and I'm not taking any of it off any of these layers. You ain't making me until I'm on that beach and the game has begun. I'm keeping all of it on. <laughs> this is what I'm wearing. I think she'll be, I think she'll do well. Um, 
the biggest concern is the fact that she's got a 23 year old daughter and a 21 year old son so it seems like the people who are on the season are the same age as her kids so that could help it could help or it could hinder depending on like the natural inclination to to be maternal to be motherly and that's not at all a detriment because there are going to be people who absolutely need that out there mm -hmm. like that maternal instinct the ability to just meet people where they are is huge so i think think that as much as unless somebody says like you're older than us we need you gone that she can probably easily like slide into that group dynamic uh fairly well and i think she is on the same season or the same tribe as like rue is the one that stood out yeah is yeah so if you're if you that that maternal stuff kicking in or being susceptible to the maternal uh, on the receiving end there from him. But that also means that they could be a tight two to potentially yeah. like move some things around. So yeah, it'll be, it's interesting too. Cause like all we get is a bio, right? So you hit the beach and then the people that you think are absolutely going to align, like hate each other. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully there's some hate. We will get to that when we do the <laughs> general thoughts on the, the whole season, but that is the one thing I've held, I held back in the, the, the one thing I don't like about the modern survivor, but we'll get there in yeah. a minute. First, we go to Jake. Jake O'Kane. They do they always is it like a requirement just because of Boston Rob back in the day? They always have someone from Boston because I feel like the last <laughs> few seasons have had like the one Bostonian person or one Boston or and or New York kind of the yeah. one very northeastern city city male. Like they, Come. it feels like we've had one of those every season. Like we had Danny last season, we had Mike the season before. So yeah, Northeast, not specifically Boston, but New Jersey, New York, Boston, that attitude, that Northeastern, yeah. uh, I don't give a fuck kind of attitude. Um, I don't know if Jake has that or not. He is just uh, from Boston. Um, so that was the first thing. And then obviously, while I go by Jacob, I have been called Jake at different times in the past. And so I am holding out hope that he can do right by the namesake and make the namesake proud. Uh, but I will say, um, I'm clinging on to that because otherwise he was one of the ones that I didn't have any reason for disliking, but I was just like, nah, not, not for me. Um, uh, but then I was like, oh, but his name is Jake. And so like, you know, <laughs> we, we gotta, we gotta, I gotta be room for him. So mixed, mixed feelings on Jake. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, he was, he was chosen to fill that clear Northeast uh northeast we needed someone with this type of accent on every season uh what do you got on jake i looking at his photo i should just not like him based on my archetype and his archetype of just like purely based on photo but then he's in theater i went to film school for acting like he's a dnd guy so that's your creative side yeah, he, was he currently okay, yeah. he lives with his 85 year old grandmother and then after he said that he's like i probably shouldn't have said her age and just like that moment is very endearing and everything that i've seen as far as him talking super endearing and when i looked at him on this i was like i don't really know about this guy like he does like there's nothing that jumps out and then i started reading this and like he's one he finished the spartan race and he makes the best homemade pizza. So, I mean, you got to give props because I also like a good homemade pizza. I had one for dinner this evening. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm liking, I'm liking Jake a lot more than I thought that I was going to when I just saw the photos before I read the bios. Well, and that's something that survivor definitely maybe not known for, but does really well to of flipping like they're, you know, trying to flip a stereotype on its yeah. head or something. And so maybe they, you know, thought through to let's find our Northeastern kind of archetype person. And you're going to think he is in the lineage of the Danny and Mike and whatever the last few seasons. But in fact, he's not, he's going to yeah. be this completely different person that you didn't think. So uh let's you know i'm rooting for you for you know i gotta root for you one way or the other and i'm hopeful that he will do the name proud then we go to his teammate jake was on the blue team i don't know if i said that then we got another blue team member here 
cat tops uh katura tops katara tops uh i think she's gonna go by cat tops i thought later on it said just cat somewhere else but i don't remember either way she was my favorite uh initially when i just did the, like scroll through all the photos and then i went back and looked at the bios she was yeah. one of my favorite i really do like that she she's 35 and i do maybe see it as being an advantage of being one of the few people that's kind of in the middle um right. that that if if age has any bit of a factor uh, that that might help in a little bit. The thing that's going to be very interesting here is she is a civil rights attorney, which is badass. And thank you. That's a wonderful, incredible thing to be doing. The thing with her bio though, is they didn't need to tell me she was a civil rights attorney for me to have deduced that that had to be her job because every answer that she gives kind of somehow comes back to that. Um, which again, I want to be very clear, badass, amazing, necessary, all, all of those things. My concern is purely for me <laughs> and the fans and possibilities for things that could happen on this season. Because as I read her bio, all I had in my head was, again, I'm coming to this as you know the challenge person who really loves Survivor 2. And so obviously I have way more of these Un unfortunate moments in the world of the challenge, but they, they happen and they're just handled much better, or there's actual real helpful conversations that happen. Certainly in the modern seasons, we've had, you know, some different tribal councils where race comes up or this comes up or that. And like, it suddenly the game is over here and we're in the real world yep. and having a real world conversation. And it's really good. Most of the time they're really good and they're really helpful. And it's like amazing that this is on this television show that all these people watch. But occasionally those moments get really awkward and like difficult to watch and not difficult to watch, but then difficult to talk about after. And like the discourse around it gets really gross. And as someone yeah. who really likes being on Twitter, when I'm watching my favorite reality competition shows, there's been a couple of moments where I'm like, Oh God, like this is gross. Like all the, everyone's reactions on both sides of this are like gross me out and I don't like it. And I just got, I got the vibe that maybe that that was at least, it just made me think of that, that like uh, how dedicated she is to the cause um, that yeah. if, if that comes up um, and, ho and if it does that, hopefully it comes up in one of those ways where like great learning moment for all of us at home and really wonderful. And I'm like thrilled that the, the show is being used as a platform. I just hope it's not a moment that turns into like, God, the discourse around this is disgusting. And I don't like, now I don't want to like take part in survivor fandom for a week or two while like they get done talking about this. Um, so that has nothing to do with her herself or even usually right. has anything to do with the situation. It's the reaction of fans outside of the show being uh, not fun to interact with, but uh, that's what I was thinking. And so that's, you know, definitely, I think the standout part of her personality, because again, every one of her answers kind of goes back to it. Um, but the thing I love the most about her, her pet peeves, slow walkers, slow talkers and people, again, <laughs> then it comes to people who ooze privilege. So again, it does, uh, it comes back, but the slow walkers, slow talkers, I was like, yeah, I'm with you right there. I'm a bit, yeah. a, I'm, we're in alignment. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a lot, a lot of thoughts that I've got about, uh, do you think she'll is Katara Katara? I'm going cat tops because I wasn't 100% positive on the pronunciation. And cat tops is just a cool last name. I don't Absolutely. Really like saying it. Tops is a great last name. I like saying that a lot. Any thought on Miss Tops? I think that her bio is the one that I felt after reading, I had the most three dimensional idea of who she was as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm now realizing that like, I don't know anybody's pronouns and we've been she and he and everything else. So we, we will adjust as apologies, yeah, necessary. apologies if, uh, they're needed at any point. Yes. And we will, we will adjust as I would have actually thought that they would, that uh survivor would have put that in the bio. And I actually think, I think we're probably safe because I feel like they would put it in the bio for everyone. If, uh, if it was necessary to help help us out, I don't know. Anyways, I would think so, again, but if not, always, you will you will hear will, us on we will the fix recap. ourselves and correct the situation if it needs corrected uh, in future episodes when we learn more about these people beyond a photo and a couple questions.
Exactly. Um, the other thing that really stood out was that they wanted, uh, where is it, about who they identified mo with most. It was just simply that they think they'll be a new player entirely. And that I really like as much as identifying people that the game is similar, but at the same time, if you're just out there playing as yourself as a player, then you're not going to be as focused on, even if it's subconscious, this person wouldn't do it this way, or this person would do it this way, and you really don't have to worry about getting it right. You can just play the game. Yeah, I, yeah, and it's such a, just a way more honest answer too. Yeah. Of like, yeah, you know, it's, they maybe are hoping one person gives that answer. That's definitely not the answer they're hoping everyone gives of like, well, I don't know. I'm new. I'm me. Uh, you know, yeah. They don't want that every single time there or else they wouldn't ask that question, but uh, it is refreshing to have someone answer with that. So um, that is Kat. And that again, she's blue team. And so is that everyone on blue? No, it's not yet. We haven't hit everyone on a team yet to do a recap of a team. So we'll move to the next person who comes from yellow and that would be Caleb and Caleb. Oh, wait, last thing on cat, which again, I completely apologize if uh, she does not go by cat or does not want to go by cat. Uh, also nailed like, was it Julie before? Yeah. Also like Julie yeah. nailed the outfit uh, and gets huge props for big flowy. What looks to be easily take off or put on like skirt over, you know, whatever, uh, bathing suit or whatnot and then athletic top just again nailed it that's what you should wear long flowy skin coverage on the bottom athletic on the top that's at least for me that's what i would wear on a survivor beach so she nailed that and speaking of that that is i said earlier there was one person who won the award and caleb gets that for me big yep. flowy everything on him which i if I was on out there, I always, every season really want to know about how much suntan lotion they're all allowed to have. Cause that's, I just think of it immediately of like, I don't know. I burn pretty easily, but, uh, of just like how they all have to be getting skin cancer. Like they have to be have given sunscreen or something. Do you know, I've, I've never listened so, to a lot of cast interviews or anything. Do they get sunscreen? They have they to, to some do. Degree, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's, um, there's something in place, which will be a foreign concept to us viewers of the challenge called a fairness judge um where <laughs> where like if somebody gets water then everybody gets water if somebody gets sunscreen then everybody gets sunscreen so um it, it play i believe last season with brandon where brandon got really like overheated in a challenge and he sat yeah. in the shade and got bottled like got water and everything then everybody else got water yeah so everybody is on a level playing field at every point and that's also where you're seeing like challenges that are x percent of your body weight and things yeah, like yeah. that and we're starting to see it in like usa too as well yeah, um CBS but yeah that production. sort of thing yeah cbs production that was complained about on season one by the people who had played the fair games before yep. and so now they're trying to get on there so yes well even with being offered some amount of sunscreen i'd still be terrified of the sun and that thus my <laughs> want for coverage and like flowy clothes that could be worn over top or easily taken off or anything uh, and so Caleb's got that down and the pants are just amazing in, in general. So I really liked that about him. And then what else did I have lost him on my sheet here? Um, he also then want, he's Canadian, right? Okay. Yep. So you got a Canadian he's our, on here. Our sole so Canadian. He's the only one. Oh man. So are you like all in on him then at a country? Pride? I'm, I'm reservedly all in. A lot of people have been talking about him as far as he seems to be smiling and like, towards everyone and so that he kind of covers his bases no matter what tribe he's on with any group and some people see that as a positive and some see that as a negative um although notoriously canadians have done quite well since we started being able to play love it okay well hopefully he can do right by your country the other right. thing that i really enjoyed about him is he his job um, he markets conservative healthcare, which maybe is what do you use that what Canadians call like holistic, like what I would think of as like holistic healthcare or something. Um, I'm not, it's an, it's a new term to me, but I, okay. yeah, it doesn't mean anything I'm political is the main thing. Uh, 
not really, I don't think at least, but yeah. I'm a massive as someone, what it means is one of the thing it means is things like chiropractic care, which yeah. I, uh, something no one listening. I don't think I've ever even mentioned on the show, but I'm a big, everyone should go to the chiropractor every week of their life. Chiropractor is, uh, is misunderstood, um, at mostly fault of the industry themselves, but, uh, is life-saving and life-changing and everyone should go to their chiropractor once a week at minimum. Uh, if you can afford it or, you know, up there in Canada, I don't know, your healthcare is pretty amazing compared to ours. So you probably have to pay less than I do, but because I'm a big Cairo person, I was like, oh, you like sell healthcare, like specifically to stuff like chiropractic care and stuff. So I was in on that and the clothes and the smile. And so, yeah, I'm in on Caleb. Uh, and that's him. That's again, yellow team. And then we move back to blue team with Kelly. Kelly is, or was, or still is a nurse, but was a nurse during COVID in NYC. So Big shout out and thank you first and foremost yep. for that. Uh, being a nurse at any time is amazing. And being a nurse during COVID anywhere in the world is really, really amazing. Um, a, but especially in a place like New York City of all places uh, is, it sounds it sounds really difficult. Let's, I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. So thank you to her and to all of the nurses there and around the world, but definitely sets you up to be, you know, as far as like pressure environments, um, I don't know that there would be much else that, you know, would get you like, you know, you're kind of used to being in it all day, the long hours, the stresses, the just dealing with, you know, compartmentalizing mentally, all the things. Um, I think that brings a lot of skills into the game. She also though, speaking of her time, you know, during COVID that's when, I don't know if you got the same read on this as me. It says I started watching the show while working through the COVID pandemic as a nurse, but then I think that the, she did like she legit never watched until then, but then maybe went back and watched because then she references Parv, Sari, Kelly Wentworth. I think are the yeah. three different players she references, which were obviously from seasons prior to the year 2020. Um, so I'm, I think I did you have the same read on that as me? Is that she never watched Survivor until the pandemic, and then did as like a like a, an escape when she's coming home from working as a nurse during the pandemic. And at some point during that, like a lot of us went and binged old seasons during the pandemic. Did you get the same read? As I that did? was kind of my feel was, yeah, she had, she started watching it during the pandemic and then like got caught up and got immersed in like yeah. older seasons and stuff like that. Just based off the, the other things that she mentioned. The wording wasn't, I wasn't a hundred percent certain, but I think that's, I think that's how she means that. I'm sure we'll find out right away oh, yeah. um, from her. And then she while she doesn't mention Catan individually, she says that she likes boards games. So she's the anti Brandon and I appreciate her for that. And so <laughs> Kelly's one of my favorites because of that. And I'm still mad at Brandon. That's fair. Um, <laughs> Kelly is also one of my absolute favorites. Um, she likes strategy board games, video games. She's nerdy. She, I also really like something that she said about wanting to align with not only people that she trusts, but people who she understands their motives. And that is such a huge thing that like nobody else has mentioned is why people are wanting to work with you. Mm -hmm. And that is key because if they want to work with you just because they think that you're a number, then that's different than somebody wanting to work with you because you have all of the qualities that they lack or whatever the case may be. Like that is huge. And to have that kind of foresight to say, this is what I'm looking for. That to me, like, plus she takes board games too seriously. And so do I. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's definitely one of my faves going in. Um, and then next we have red team, the final red team member, Nicholas. Uh, have they said Sifu is, have they said Sifu. his name? Sifu. Okay. Um, so he stands out. Uh, well, first off, I was just Googling and why I'm stuttering my way through this is because I realized he was from somewhere in Illinois. So I had to look up, but he's basically <laughs> from St. Louis, uh, the, the, on the Illinois side. So still a little bit of points in my book. Um, but I'm really just Chicago proud, not like Illinois proud. I grew up in Ohio, so, um, it's mostly the city thing, but still fine. St. Louis right down the road. Maybe he wants to come up to Chicago and hang out. Maybe I could go down there, there and check go. out his gym because he is a gym owner and he is definitely 
uh, filling the role of like the big, strong athlete of the cast. And even more so, like I referenced earlier, again, unfairly going off of just pictures, but the cast overall maybe looks a little less athletic. Um, and so that makes someone like him stand out even more than it already stands out when they throw the one person who's like, I've got a hundred pounds of muscle on me, like compared to everyone else. Um, so that could be, you know, that can go any, any which way, especially when you're kind of the only one in that mold, you know, it could be a Jonathan like situation where yeah. it's like, it's a real advantage. You, you really like your team wins a bunch of stuff because the games are set up for the big, strong person to be the biggest advantage, or it could very much be the, we're scared of this person. You know, we have a conflated view of how much that will matter in all of the challenges. And so we're scared of you and you get voted out right away or right away in the merge. Um, once you're not a help to a team anymore, it could go either way, but he's definitely filling, filling that role. Um, or at least again, who knows, uh, could be, you know, completely not what we expect from that type of role. Um, but is filling the role at least of, they seem to always be down to have one, really, really muscular guy in there just to see, see how it plays. And uh, it's always one of the biggest question marks of the season for me going in. He will be uh he'll be Rick's favorite player because he's a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. He's not the only one on here. Uh, I don't know that the others mentioned Dragon. Who's the main, I'm sorry for folks who like Dragon Ball Z, who is blasphemous for me to ask who's the main character of Dragon Ball. It'd be Goku. Okay. Okay. And then what is someone else referenced Naratu earlier who is from Oh yeah, Naruto. Um Naruto. So yeah, Austin? again, apologies to all uh all anime fans and whatnot. Um clearly not, but respect it. <laughs> uh, uh but uh yeah, there's been a there's a decent amount of anime references uh in I think three or four different people. Um so I'm really looking forward to we got, you know, I think it was was it Danny? that did i think so some, yeah did the did. i don't know what the oh yeah that was danny mccray yeah yeah what, what i don't yeah. know which character it does but the classic isn't that the dragon ball thing that he did it like sure the celebration? Is. yeah uh so i i really like when people bring the anime celebrations in because they're great celebrations so hopefully he gets to win something and he gives us a little dragon ball flavor um in celebration he'll be i think he'll be safe until the merge and then based on then it will become a matter of social capital what he's built up to see how far he can go or how he's going to have to maneuver in a, like the post merge but i think i think it should be good up to the merge unless they have one of those situations where they're like he's eating more than everyone else <laughs> so he's depleting our resources quicker even though he is a help in challenges blah 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 like could go Pretty either cool. way where he pulls a Dunbar and says, well, I'm bigger, so I need more protein than the rest of you. And so I can steal the food. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That'll work classic, well for him. Classic reality TV trope. Um, and that one, at least for those keeping home at score or keeping score at home for how many challenge references, that one was at least referencing the season of the challenge where they did a survivor season, the Island. So, you know, I'm at least trying to, trying to, you know, thread the needle there. Uh, then we move to the final blue team member, which is Kendra. Kendra is, was the first, I think, I, again, I may have been wrong, the first one to mention Carolyn, uh, which I thought Carolyn was going to get more mentions. I thought yeah. um, since these people all got to see season 44, I think. Seems like, or um, at least half of it. Like, I don't yeah, know if they part, saw who some won. Part but... of it, um, that, yeah, I thought there would be more Carolyn, Carson, and uh jam jam references and i don't know that carolyn or car or uh, jam jam or carson were at all and carolyn was just this one uh so maybe they didn't i don't know maybe they didn't get to all see this was filmed in summer i don't even remember i'm not going to try to do timelines they're so confusing anyways kendra mentioned carolyn and so i like that but then i liked it even more because she mentions michelle who everyone who listens to this knows that i adore michelle i'm in love with michelle she is my absolute freaking favorite um tied for favorite on the season of challenge usa too because desi was my favorite on the first season and i obviously felt horrible about how that went so they're tied in who i am rooting for on challenge usa too um but michelle is like my favorite current cast member of the challenge i just adore her and so the moment kendra was like 
you know, mentions her at all. I'm like, all right, I'm in, you win. Uh, you, you mentioned my favorite person. So here we go. You, you know, you're, you're in my good graces for the time being at least. So just so that everyone is aware, my, my favorite on the challenge USA right now, it's a trifecta of Desi, Michaela Chanel. And I have been waiting for Michaela to have her second shot because the first going, the first going, I was so big on Michaela in preseason and then she was first boot. And I was like, look, this was not a proper representation of what Michaela is capable of. Michaela is a badass and she will come back and she will be a badass and she's she's back and is a badass. She's amazing on for every, every part of pillar of the show. She's fantastic at it. She's built for it. Love her. Um, Um, yeah, for can for whatever reason I have like I have reservations about Kendra and I shouldn't cuz like she should be the one that I'm completely drawn to just based on personality and based on what she said, but for some reason I just have like this reticence to fully commit. So I actually in my notes I was like I want to wait until at least episode 1 before I make a decision on this person. <laughs> Because I don't know. I just like uh, something about it is holding me back from being all in. And I have no idea what it is. Ooh, I just caught something in her bio. She says was well, something we would never know from looking at you that I talk exactly like Drew Barrymore. I hope she doesn't mention that in like the first episode while Drew Barrymore is still currently receiving a lot of flack online. And that, that yeah. she, if she references her and then just for no totally unfair reasons people are like we're mad at drew barrymore right now so we're mad at you uh so hopefully she doesn't mention that in the first episode but that just that is not why i am reticent on her by the way (laughs) i don't know what it is but it's not that um she also nails the outfit all the women are just way smarter about the outfits than the men yes like or at least have figured out what the approach like the thing is again long flowy skirt that you know is kind of a tie on wrap up can be used to cover any part of the body as a blanket whatever and then athletic top so just nailing it all the way through i found i remembered it's because she one of her pet peeves is when people ask me the meaning of my tattoos um I don't I like incur- that at all either. Like you're supposed what what else am I supposed to ask? You have tattoos on your body. I I like it personally because I have an entire literary sleeve of tattoos and like I have 78 and a half hours worth of tattooing wow. completed. Um Dang. so I like I like having those conversations because to me it's like my personality on me. Yeah. And you had reason behind them. So therefore yeah. then you would have, obviously, if there was a reason for you putting them on your body, then you would probably enjoy getting to talk about whatever those reasons are in some form or fashion. So this tells me that she, her tattoos are random and that her is one of the ones that just kind of liked the idea of a tattoo and then liked getting the first one and maybe got a bunch more and maybe they don't mean really anything to her. So that's why she doesn't want people asking. Um, yeah it's like i get it like i get if somebody comes up to you because she's a bartender as well so i get if like that's a chat up line that totally understand i feel like that's definitely the like if you're gonna try to make small talk with the bartender ever she probably is like nine out of ten people come up and like they'll just like throw what's that tattoo about when i like hand them a drink or whatever yeah it gets really annoying okay i'm I erase my negativity uh for that right that that makes sense of how that would happen I'm glad uh, we talked opinion, it through. Yeah, my our I think our opinion still stands on uh, disagreeing with uh, being annoyed, but given the circumstances and how it probably came to be, totally makes sense. Totally understand and empathetic yeah. to that. All right, then we got two more left. They're both on the yellow team. Starting with Sean. Sean is the one I had the big outfit question for. Are jeans shorts an amazing choice for your clothing? Or are they the worst possible choice for your clothing to be on? The I would worry about chafing. Days? Yeah. All I think is chafing, but then they are really durable and the durability thing would be good on the Island. Um, and so I was kind of going like either way, but uh, he's certainly far from the first to wear jeans or jean shorts in this instance uh, on there. And they always stand out to me as like, it feels like as they would have a few things going for them, but yeah, just the chafing would have to yeah. be and how hot they would have to be. 
And so, yeah, uh, that, that was the first thing. Uh, sorry, Sean, that stood <laughs> out. Uh, but clearly, as you can all tell by now at the end of this list, uh, I, the, the outfits matter a lot to me. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that stood out from him that is interesting, and I'm, I'm very interested to hear more about his life in Provo, Orem, Utah, which is basically it, Provo, Orem is just south of Salt Lake City. Uh, they're their own cities, but it kind of all merges into one. I have spent uh, a decent amount of time in that area uh, in the last handful of years. Um, but he is a gay man who is a school principal. Uh, so a very public you know, figure in the community and everything. And because he is a gay man who's a school principal in Provo, Orem, Utah, where there is the culture is different, respectfully to Utah folks listening. There is, you know, uh, different religious cultures there that I would maybe think uh, he is maybe faced some comments and things for being a gay man who is uh, very public and, you know, a part of a lot of people's lives because he is the principal right. to their children. So I'm very interested what if, you know, that's me potentially incorrectly stereotyping like Utah of thinking like there would be a little more friction in his life um, because of the area he lives. But yeah. uh, so I apologize if I'm wrong about that. I'm certainly not saying that about everyone in Utah, you know, is like would have a problem with a gay man being their school principal or anything like that. But I'm very intrigued to to know like that possibly could, you know, if he's faced some different social stresses that not all of us would have would go through. Right. That that might set him up really, really well for this game of, you know, uh, again, interacting with the whole community. My mo my mother is, was a principal. I know what the principal in mine, a small town, so maybe a little different, but still to the, the families that are at the school he is the principal at, they're, that is the, its own community and what right. the principal means and how everyone knows them and like the opinions they have of them in the different situations that person is and like what their social skill set becomes as a principal. Uh, and so I'm rooting for him because, you know, son of a principal, I'm, I'm, I'm in on school principals. I like school principals. Um, uh, and I'm also just interested to see, uh, to learn more of his story and, uh, to find out what all he might be bringing to this game, um, uh, because of different social situations he's found himself in. Yeah. And he like, I, for whatever reason, get like really big Mr. Turner, Mr. Feeney vibes from, <laughs> from him. Like, I feel like, yeah, he's from a position of power and a lot of people are in this cast are younger as well. So it could be that like principal student sort of kind of social structure, but I don't think that it will come into play because I feel like he is like infinitely relatable just from bio and photo that he will be like completely absorbed into the tribe. The And we always talk about how like the jobs that people have, like in our head, we immediately get an idea of what somebody will be like, but that doesn't mean like Jack, like we could, <laughs> we could have I mean, most of this cast are related to like law or lawyers in some capacity. There's a lot of law mentioned in this, yes. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if they like try to hide it or like who I am always interested in who tries to hide what they do for a profession because sometimes it has no bearing and they're like, well, I can't let anybody know that I'm this because then I'm out. And you're like, I don't that that does not factor into my. <laughs> Yeah, it's only making. the only time that ever registers is the professional athlete. But yeah. I'm like, even then I'm like, well, they can tell. Like, yeah. da Danny, you don't have to tell him you played in the NFL. They still think the <laughs> same, like he's the best athlete here. They still think that. Yeah. So like, you're not hiding that. But like, that's the only time where I'm like, okay, I get why you're maybe not saying it. But otherwise, yeah, when it's like, I'm a therapist, I can't tell them that. They'll think I can like read them too well. Like, eh, it's, no, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. No. You can, you can tell them what you, you can tell them what you do. Uh, Cause you might get caught in that lie and that would be way worse than whatever little benefit you think you're getting from not telling them. I still remember on millennials versus gen Xers, Brett told everybody that it was a funeral director. And then he walked away and <laughs> like four of them. And Jay was like, pretty sure he's a cop. 
<laughs> and he was a cop. Uh, but he like he, he picked cop. funeral director and he knew like a, a decent amount of stuff about it. But at the same time, as soon as he walked away, they're all like, he's a cop. I remember this now because I that was one of the seasons, as I mentioned earlier, that I went back and watched. And that's but the sad thing was I watched so many in like a short span at the beginning yeah. of the pandemic that like they're all a blur. Like these are not the shows to binge. You, I don't I don't retain a lot when I binge anything, um, but I did not retain like I feel like I could watch and be other than kind of knowing of like I know when Jay goes home. I know a couple highlights or whatever but like it all just kind of went in one side and out yep. the other um which was is kind of a bummer but it's kind of nice to be able to then rewatch. i did have to read through here because it just said school principal and i hadn't tried to find it but later on he does say elementary school principal yeah i saw that is again the best kind to be because that's what my mom was uh but i also think uh people like generally like their elementary school principal and the dislike for principals is more like the high school principals level. Um, but yeah, I'm very, I, I'm very excited and definitely, definitely rooting for him. And as you said, yes, we Same. do all just like base everything off like the one experience we have with a person who does this or is like that. So we expect you to be the same. I do expect him to be my mom. Um, and yeah. he, he's not my mom, obviously. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, but you know, in my mind, I'm like, he has, he is the exact same personality and skill set and everything else that my mom has because they have the same Bless job you. and she's the only elementary principal I ever knew. Um, yeah. and so, uh, well, I'm guessing that will turn out to not be true, but, uh, I will be rooting for him either way. And then we end with, we have one more person left, Sabaya Broderick, who best outfit as far as look functional with all my criteria, but oh. also just looks great. Um, love it. Um, let's see what I got here about her. Okay, yeah. This was, I don't know if she will be my winner's pick. We will get there uh, a little bit later on, uh, but she's in the running for it. Former Marines, yes. turned truck driver. I'm just so in. Sounds <laughs> so in uh incredible outfit we mentioned and then likes basketball i really like basketball does not like lazy people i am sometimes a lazy person but when i'm not a lazy person i don't like lazy people so uh, which is a very bad double standard to have but it's just <laughs> true so i'm in on sabaya who i hope i'm pronouncing correctly uh is thankfully is the last on the list so the last time i can butcher a name until we actually have heard them all said out loud on television um but uh yeah i'm very in and i'm very interested this is the one other thing i should have said before not just athlete if you were a marine specifically i don't think i'm mentioning that because if i if someone tells that's like one of the very few things that if someone said they're a marine i'm like oh dude if you if you did that, like if you got through all the stuff you have to get through to be a Marine, this is easy for you. Like you ain't, yep. this isn't, this isn't hard or stressful for you. And I can't have you around if you, your life isn't hard out here. Cause all of the rest of us, like, this is really fucking hard. Uh, so that is one thing I will be interested to see if she just goes with, I'm a truck driver. Cause that's what I do now. And just yep. never, ever mentions the Marine. Um, she does looking at her picture there's some tattoos on the inside of one arm and i know you know with the armed services and marines in particular i feel like but all the armed services there's a uh propensity to end up with a tattoo that maybe like lets that be known so it'd be i would love 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 if like she's got like a tattoo on like her shoulder or something that like tells if she's like i don't want anyone to know so like i always gotta have that covered that would be a fun little subplot um but yeah those are my my thoughts on sabaya what about you badass like total badass um love the bio love the photo love the outfit um like i forget where i heard it but she somewhere said and i might have even read it here that she wanted to be a leader and if not she could also take that down a step and be a follower and i think that's huge because you so many people will walk in and want to lead but they don't know how to follow and to be able to kind of balance that is is key but also i mean everything in this bio just makes me completely want her to win yeah she's amazing and 
Uh, one thing that I did not bring up about past folks, but I definitely held against some people in the past and was actually the only thing that I didn't like about Sean, who we just talked about was Sean. was one of many who for the first after it goes age, hometown, current residence, occupation, or the first four, just like answer these, not like write something. Yeah. The first question that you have to like write words for is three words to describe you. And Sean used all use six words connection seeker ambitiously minded magnetic energy and he was not alone there was a lot of people who used a lot more than three words and i was like come on y'all like the question said three words um and so sabaya was one that did resilient vibrant proud and was one of the people that's like it said three words so i picked three words and so i respect that and just wanted the reference that a lot of people did not use three words and that was bothering me but i hadn't brought it up until uh, i realizing that she did not looking at her photo you totally feel those three words yeah for sure she embodies all three of those in one image very easily so yeah uh yeah so that's your cast uh and to recap briefly just the team wise so on the red team then we'll have austin d j maya drew julie and sifu And then on the yellow team, Brandon, Emily, Hannah, Caleb, Sean, Sabaya. And on the blue team, Brando, Bruce, Jake, Kat, Kelly, and Kendra. So those are your teams. Those are your your entire cast, the whole thing. Now let's do some quick just kind of general thoughts and hopes for the season. And then after that, we'll do the predictions to close it out. So general thoughts for the season either like on the trailer or from any of the other videos or anything you've watched of either big positives or negatives that stand out for you and or the one big thing we can definitely discuss is the fact that it's going to be 90 minute episodes the whole season instead of i think they've been doing 90 minute premieres and then 60 minute episodes after that so take it wherever you want to go general thoughts looking forward to this season the cast is really solid um, I so far I really like everyone um, in watching their videos I like them all even more having been able to hear them talk a little bit and just kind of see the mannerisms and everything else get a better feel for them just beyond photo bio um, really big on the 90 minute episodes as long as that is focused on really fleshing out these people that are playing the game and who they are and how they work together and the strategic side of it if we have 90 minute episodes just to throw more advantages in it then i don't want it i don't care back to 60 minutes i mean erica got was barely shown in her winning season for the first half of it because she wasn't a part of the advantages that were being won and like that's a huge detriment as a viewer because you don't know what somebody did to get to the end and win when everybody else who's there voted for her because of it and you don't get time to like like that person to get to know that person so that's to me is why you need to make a show like this 90 minutes is to really focus on the people um but otherwise i mean i have i have no need for a 90 minute episode if it's just going to be more advantages from the trailer i saw the gavel come down i don't assume it's just because there's a lot of law related folk on it i really like that that tells me that we are getting an option again um it'll be interesting to see how it plays out in the past towards the end auctions nobody bid on anything they just waited until the advantage showed up and then they all put all their money on it and then they drew rocks so it became a non-thing so then they stopped doing it so i'm hoping that they found a way to sort of reinvent it um so that it's not that and that it can keep going also Everybody jumping on the, off the boat uh, leads me to believe that we're getting another marooning, which we haven't seen in a hot minute. So super stoked to that because lately we've been landing on the we've been starting on the beach to do the challenge. I mean, what, what do you mean by the marooning for the for the less inclined like myself? Yeah. Here? So the marooning, basically, they used to start on the boat and there were all these supplies on the boat okay, and you yeah, had yeah. rafts and you had to like had five minutes or whatever to pick up everything you could off the boat and jump in and paddle out they did it in 41 i believe yeah, because I say, danny's 41 or 42 they still did it because uh, danny's t uh tribe didn't untie their boat uh from both spots that they needed to 
Yes, I remember that. Out. Danny was 42, right? Uh, 41. He was 42. He was 42. And yeah. then so they must have done it 41 and 42 because I remember specifically Xander jumping in. And as he was jumping in, I was like, you're going to get that sweater wet and it's going to be really heavy. <laughs> yes. Yes, it will. Again, the clothing matters. It matters a lot. You have to yeah. put a lot of thought, a lot of thought into it. Um, so I had mixed feelings. The trailer itself, and we're coming off of it's partially in it's not even partially, it's almost entirely because we're coming off of season 44, where the trailer was showed a ton, and I went yeah. into 44 being like is this going to live up? Like, are these characters going to live up to like, they showed us a lot. What seems like they would be like highlight funny moments or like scary right. moments or crazy moments or whatever. And it was like, no, we actually have the goods. Like we didn't show you everything. Like there's you can, wait till you actually get to spend a whole season with Carolyn and jam jam. Like you just wait, like we showed you nothing. Um, and so coming off that like incredible trailer where I was like, I'm really hyped. They clearly, if they're willing to show us that they've got a lot yeah. of good stuff. This trailer, I was much more like, uh, they didn't really show me anything. I don't, I'm, and which is fine, but also like, I'm a little nervous that it might not be, I don't know. like you, the last season wasn't like the best season ever by any means, but it was really entertaining for me. And the cast yeah. was really, really entertaining. And, you know, very specifically Carson jam jam and Carolyn made it that along with a lot of others, but um, it did make me a little, my expectations are much lower. We'll put it that way. I was a little tepid of like, I'm a little worried that it might be a little more of a boring season, or maybe the cast doesn't have quite the right. star power, or the pop of last, or that, you know, what helps make for a great season or is one of the many ingredients that goes into a really great season. So I was a little nervous. The 90 minute episode thing is very interesting because you said it exactly correctly. And I think every fan agrees of, 90 minutes is cool if that extra 30 minutes is because you want to get back to showing some more yeah. of like the people interacting and hanging out versus just 30 more minutes of the scramble and the gameplay and the, the you know, the different versions of the vote that could be and everything like that. If that happens once in a while, like in a, in the rare example where like, it really is like, the two hours before tribal or like that entertaining, that interesting and the iterations of it, that's cool. And there has been a couple times in the past where I'm like, I wish we could have kind of almost seen more of what transpired yeah. there. But for the most part, I am also like this better. We better not get to the third episode and be like, it's still purely about the game and the strategy and the twists and the idols, because now I don't want this to be 90 minutes. And now I'm like bummed out almost that this is 90 minutes. And that's not yeah. a place you want to be since they've already said it's 90 minutes the whole way through. There's nothing that's going to change that. Um, but I did get hope from listening to, uh, or I, I heard a clip or maybe a little video, uh, or maybe read it. I think it was an article I read. I don't remember at this point. <laughs> um, but with one of the production team talking about the, the move to 90 minutes and whether yeah. like it was a good idea or not. And, you know, mixed reaction from fans. And he was saying, and I apologize, I forget who, which one it was or, uh, who was saying it, but said that like, they were feeling really good. They were done with like the first four episodes or almost the fifth episode. And they were feeling great about the choice and that they were able nice. to back up the choice and that it was being used to tell you more about these people and their interactions and everything. And so that gave me, it didn't sound like, you know, just trying to like satiate people that might be upset online or whatever. It sounded like truthful and honest of like, that was actually our intention and we we're actually able to do it so far uh, nice. because Survivor has been really interesting, especially in the modern era of it, that it is the show where you got the most, like you learned the most about yeah. the people that were on it. And I would say the fandom was the most interested in the, like the human element, the human story of it all compared to all the other shows. Um, but that in the modern era, they have both in some ways leaned even more into that, into like the, you know, it's one of my gripes that will, kind of get to here in one moment that like in recent seasons in the modern era i'm bummed because i have no one to root against and there's like no yeah. villains because like every person in the cast has this like amazing story in some way or shape or form and like they're all clearly like awesome wonderful people and all this that and the other and that's really great when you want it to be this like human interest story the whole way through all these people you can root for all these really good people that you can tell like you're a good person um 
but there is a little bit of that that could be boring in like the world of reality tv of like i would kind of like there to be one person i don't like almost <laughs> which is weird because like you know i don't like them or i like maybe don't think they're as good of a person but like i kind of want that involved in the show or whatever and they've leaned so heavily on all these these people all having these like stories and everything but then at the same time we get it in really quick little yeah. downloads where it'll be like Jesse was a is a great example of where like Jesse has this incredible story, this really resonating way, reason for being there, and is this really like incredible personality. And we get gameplay Jesse, like ruthless gameplay Jesse, ninety five percent of the time. But like in the third episode, they give us a quick like, here's a sixty second download of like his family life and his whole story and everything. And then like eight episodes later, when he's maybe going to get voted out we'll give you the extra, like the 60, 60 seconds, like just to remind you uh, everything he references in his, <laughs> you know, in his confessionals, here's another 60 second download on like Jesse's life. And I'm like, yeah. okay, you're leaning heavily on to everyone having that type of story, but at the same time, giving us very little of that. And so if you're going to lean your cast that so far that way, it gives me hope that they will then be like, and instead of the 60 second download once or twice a season on that person, we have room now to actually give you turn that into three minutes on a Jesse yeah. or whoever and give you way more, especially early, like learning about these people and then watching the part of the game that is just the, oh, so-and-so and so-and-so, you know, Jul uh, Julie and Drew do, there is this like maternal thing, like Drew's, you know, homesick a little and Julie fills his maternal role and look at them just, they chatting on the beach and now they're tight and now they're like wait are we working together now because we're like friends like how does that work like you know more of that part of the game um yeah. so i have faith because it is they're incredible at what they do it's an incredible operation they run i think they know what they're doing and i think they have a good track record of more often than not responding to fans in the appropriate way of like yeah. not overreacting to something some people don't like not necessarily always fixing anything or correcting things, but like acknowledging and actually seemingly having thought through concerns or issues a fan would have and taking them in like, should, is that, you know, is there any validity to this and should we try to do anything about it? And so I feel pretty certain they are going to use this time for the stuff we're all looking for versus just, yeah. Hey guys, there's seven idols, just this episode, seven new idols this is going to be crazy for 90 minutes. Like, I don't think they're going to do that. Maybe they will once. Who knows? Um, but that's that's my general overall th thoughts. But the the last general thing we I will bring up is I just referenced the whole villain thing. That has been my biggest gripe of the last couple of seasons. Um, I really had to grasp last season. Uh, Paige talked me into at some point being just hating Danny uh, so that I could like have someone to like not like. Um, and so I went all in on like, yeah, Danny sucks, um, which I don't know that is true. Uh, but I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I need someone. Um, I admit I like villains on, yeah. I like having villains and, or I like, I like just, I like being able to root for some people and kind of against, you know, in a sports type of way, not in a, like, you know, the human, the person or whatever type of way, but, uh, in the kind of sports way of like rooting against someone and for the other, or just having a side, like having an opinion, yeah. having people that like actual rivalries take place or like antagonistic moments between two people where they like really either don't gel with each other or like actually going at each other in some way. And I feel like because of the way they cast it and combined with all of these people kind of like you know what all the shows have to go with the in the last decade of like the social media era of reality tv of them also knowing like everyone you know i have to deal with social media and everything yeah that survivor lacks that element in the modern seasons from time to time um and looking at this cast i am not seeing anyone uh that you know that stands out in any way of like oh maybe that guy or maybe that lady could be the villain or like maybe this person and this person are going to hate each other for some reason or another. Um, so I'm hopeful there will be some of that. I'm hopeful there's some dissent, some rivalry, some antagonism in some form or fashion, because I think it makes it more interesting, not because I'm rooting for people to be mean to each other or anything like that, but I kind of am in a weird way. That's the sadistic part of reality television. Um, 
so yeah, that's my my biggest fear slash hope at the same time is I, I do fear a little bit that I'm just going to like everyone again, um, yeah. which is a, a good problem in its own way. But my hope is that there will be some people who without actually being terrible human beings can be like a, fill a villain role or bring some level of antagonism to some part of the game. Like more cutthroat gameplay where most people are playing like a, a friendlier game. Yeah, like I, you know, uh, having not watched a lot of the seasons, but am now a huge Tyson fan because of him being on the challenge, <laughs> but then, and then in getting to know him through that, but then I listen yeah. to his podcast and I listen to him cover the last few seasons of the show. So I feel like, you know, I, I know him and his personality really well. And I understand having went back and watched one of his early seasons, like, yeah, not lovable, like necessarily, but like, do I, I think he's like a really good person like now or whatever. So like yeah. you could be, a good person who's also like a little antagonistic and like a little bit of a dick, you know, at times or whatever out totally. there. Um, and just, yeah, plays more cutthroat is a little more ruthless and just adds that element to the game that I think sometimes it gets a little too, everyone's really awesome people. And so everyone's really nice and even like blind sides and stuff have to be like, there's no version of a blind side that isn't like a true blind side, not just, they call every vote a blind side these days, which yeah. Survivor is also hilarious with how they, all the shows are. It's not just Survivor, but like the overuse of the jargon at some point. Um, but like, there's no true blind side that isn't in some way cutthroat. But some of the ones that have happened on recent seasons, like you, it's like the nicety around all of it, and like the general good feelings around all of it. And I'm just like, ah, I need a little more. I need a little edge. I just need a little edge to my Survivor. That's the best way to put it. I think I always, the way that I always look at it so that I can have that kind of duality is I pick my favorite, favorite people. And then anybody who against, who is against them is then in my bad books. That's the best way to go about it. Because yeah. you're, there's not necessarily like villains, but like everybody was gunning for Jesse because if Jesse makes it to the end, he wins. So there were people that for the episode... I was not a fan of them, despite the fact that I liked them the episode before, and I'd probably like them the episode after. But, like, they were gunning for Jesse, so they needed to go away. It's like when we watch when we watch the challenge. Like, there's not necessarily somebody that you actively dislike. It's if they're going after the person that you like, then they're wrong, and they need to be gone. Yeah, because even the challenge is starting to suffer from this. Uh, and certainly the CBS version of it is a little bit slowly starting to suffer from it, which is the last the last thing that the challenge needs to be doing. But regardless, um, so yeah, uh, that's my main hope. Do you have any, is there any, if one big, your biggest wish, uh, biggest hope or a thing you're looking for on the season before we get into predictions of either like you mentioned the, bringing back the auction, um, you know, anything yeah. being brought back or any, anything that you love the most about survivor that you're hoping takes place. So not necessarily for this season, but something I hope takes place at some point, I would love to see a season where after every tribal, they do a swap because then you're not, you have to build alliances or at least friendships with everybody. So because there's some, like there could come a point where you get to final tribal council and somebody on the jury has never played the game with you and then how does that work so i would love to see it where you have to play and you have to vote people out but you have to vote people out in the way that you could then have to be working with their allies the very next day in order to stay in the game um i just think that that would be a have really interesting dynamic no they, okay. they've done they've done some where they've done a lot of swaps but not like an every time that you go to tribal, you then the next day you swap tribes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. I think take, it could be take interesting. The challenge books. The challenge loves swapping players these days. That's all, all the rage. So give it a shot. <laughs> all right. Let's move then to our predictions to close yes. it out. Uh, I came up with a very random list of things that we can predict up to and including obviously a winner's pick that will be hilariously wrong because it's <laughs> impossible to pick winners on survivor uh is definitely the hardest one i would say i yes. think it would be even harder in big brother you think it's harder in big brother i 
I think that New Era Survivor is even harder because of the edit. They haven't quite nailed down how to edit the winner. Mm -hmm. So that makes it even harder. Yeah. Uh, That's another, that's a good question. I should have asked you earlier. And I don't think I know about you from our previous communications. Um, Are you into the the edgic as it is coin, the editing logic, or like kind of following the editing? Uh, Because I am someone who I did not like it but I watch yeah. so much at this point that like, I can't help myself. And so like, especially this season, of the challenge USA, I, you know, I've been lamenting and then turning a corner in recent episodes, the whole season of being like my guy Fessy, like I think he's in a great spot, but like, they're just not showing him at all. I feel like there's no way he's winning. If like, this is the edit he's getting. And then it's turned the corner a little in the last few episodes yeah. where I'm like, Oh, wait, is there a little bit of hope? Um, so I can't help myself, but I don't, I try to not dive into it. I really respect and I like after the fact looking at like all the great accounts out there on social media that like really go hard and Survivor has, you know, was the yeah. one I believe that birthed it. And I, I don't know the name of the the exact account that does it. Um, and I know there's a few that do it, but there's some really good ones that like, you know, label the player, they're down. this, they're that, or this based on all this different stuff. And like, they really, really, really go deep on the editing logic stuff, which I respect. And I love reading after the fact, but I yeah. try not to pay attention during, do you, how much do you I, read into the edit as you're watching? I read it. It's funny. I read into the edit more on the challenge than I do on survivor um, because survivor the challenge, editing, I mean, just, they just, you, it, you the foreshadowing, yeah, like, it's impo- they, they need to figure it out. I wrote down timestamps on the last episode and I was like, by the 10 minute mark, I knew everybody who was going to be up and who was going into elimination. Yeah, Um, because they they're like, well, our structure of our show is we get five minutes till we go to the daily challenge and we have to mention, you know, start the story arc for the person that wins and the two people that go into elimination. So you're going to see three people in those five minutes and you know, (laughs) those are your three principal actors, the rest of the show. And it's like, uh, you know, I, I, I get it, but it, yeah, Survivor doesn't do it as dramatically, but it's still... No, they're a bit more frenetic, so uh, for Survivor, I do pay a lot more attention um, just to, like, I don't pay attention to the edit necessarily, probably on a subconscious level I do, but I pay a lot more attention to the conversations that are being had and, like, the dynamics that are being created and then go from there, which I guess in some way is the edit because it's what we're being shown but I focus a lot more on just the players. Um, Whereas with something like the challenge, I pay a lot more attention to the edit because I know that it comes into play a lot more. Yeah, certainly. All right. Without further ado, then predictions for season 45, which team wins the most challenges, red, yellow, or blue, or out of respect, Reba, Lulu, or Bello. Reba has a good crew. Um, They seem fairly rounded. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to Lulu though. When I was looking at the tribes, Lulu is the one that I'm the most drawn to. I also said Lulu and obviously I have no reason for this. And I'm now realizing that I'm also, our next thing is going to be who goes home first. And I say a Lulu person. So my, we don't match up here necessarily. Uh, yeah, I think they're really balanced, at least from yeah. the little we know. I feel feel like they're balanced, and obviously this and all predictions are impossible and are completely <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> blindfolded throws of the dart here. Um, so, yeah. yeah, we'll see. I like that we're on the same page on that one. Okay, we'll see if we're on the same page with the second one then. Who goes home first, and why is it Brandon? <laughs> so it's not. It's Kendra. Oh. Wait, there's and Kendra? I, I already forgot names. I don't even She's the her. bartender that doesn't want people to ask about her tattoos. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Um okay. I survive. I feel like I feel like when she hits the beach, she may not be I think that she's gonna rely too much on being a bartender and just being able to talk to anyone. And I feel like that might rub people the wrong way. Um and again, this is based off a photo and a bio, but we have to pick somebody to be the first one out. And for me, that's Kendra. It is always the, I, I always have to have it as part of predictions because it's hilariously brutal <laughs> to pick of like, why I don't know why, but if you're going to make me pick someone, I guess I got to say a name now. But yep. that's the beauty of these shows. You got to make people say names. That it's is true. always, that's a classic way to instigate something as a producer of these shows, make someone say a name. That's just 
flat. So all, it, all, all that matters. It always works. It makes something happen. Um, yeah, I'm saying Brandon for obvious reasons. Uh, Brandon needs to go home first. And I hope Brandon gets <laughs> home first. And uh, Brandon, I'm sorry. You're probably a wonderful human being uh, who I would like very much. But you're going home first. And but you, you don't home, like the same board game. Yeah, I mean, just why? It, it's it's not that he doesn't like it. He clearly like hates it or like has someone in his life that loves it and he hates them for it. They mentioned it too much or whatever <laughs> because like he called it out for no like no reason. Like it was just like had you know. So that's it's not like someone asked him like, do you like board games? He's like, oh no, it's lame. Or yeah. Anyways, Brandon probably not going to go home first. Kendra probably not going to go home first, but maybe you will. Yeah. Who do you think this one? I feel like we can at least. We got a shot at maybe coming up with this. We can kind of base it off of our very loose uh, opinions that we've formed thus far. <laughs> Who do you think will be the stars of the season? Or do you have the highest probability will be the stars of the season, a la a, a Carson or a Caroline or Jesse or Cody, et cetera, from seasons past that didn't win, but are potentially the first person you think of from that season? Because uh, I would say definitely... Jam Jam last season gets would be thought of just as quickly as Carson Caroline. They're kind of a package yeah. that you would think of, but um, you know, certainly with 43 and Gabler winning, yeah, you know, is one of many across survivor seasons where the winner isn't necessarily the first person that might come to your head. It is certainly yeah. necessarily not the biggest star as far as like the star of the television show of the season. So who stands out to you in the cast that you think might be could be the stars of the season personality wise? Uh your best friend Brandon as well as caleb You're probably right. i've got you're probably right <laughs> <laughs> i've got d down there as well and uh and brando based simply on the fact that he has a nickname yes nickname okay nicknames help i like wait read me that list one more time so scrolling got through my pictures and getting uh visuals. brandon yep brando yep caleb and d okay I think those are all solid picks. I, I like where your head's at with that. I am going to go with, I think that, oh, I almost want to say your first out pick just to, just to get back at you. Um, <laughs> I think the final two people we spoke about, Sabaya and Sean, I think yep. I have good feelings that they could be standout personalities and stars. Um, I, I want to say Caleb, but I, I, for some reason, I also think he might go home early. So, uh, you know, to add a completely unfounded opinion on top of a completely unfounded opinion, <laughs> we won't say Caleb. Uh, Jay Maya, I think, definitely. And then Bruce has the, the built-in right. capital. So I feel like if Bruce makes it at least even to the merge – that they, like, would, they have a built-in storyline with him to focus on, and he did – show of like a big personality in the brief moments he was on before and in the clips coming in. And like you said, he's definitely coming out here, like attacking this. Like, it's not like he's yeah. like, scared of it or anything like that. Um, so I think Bruce also, because it's, it feels like that would be the obvious, like, you know, the story's built in right there. Or the one part of the story's built in. So I'm going Bruce, J Maya and uh, Sabaya and Sean are my, my guesses, my predictions for, the stars of the season. Solid. Two more predictions then. The big one here. How many idols will go into circulation? And I want to also, I'm going to post this on social media and uh, I'm, but we're going to keep track. And this is going to be hilarious because uh, I, I do not know. I'm sure you can look up pretty easily maybe uh, for the last seasons, like what the number of idols specifically, not advantages or twists, but just, just idols. Um, and we'll count real and fake. Okay. Um, we'll count real and fake that the production issues, okay. not not fake that the the, the cast, cast members build, which I did want to point out because I still have her picture up here. Uh, one thing maybe working for Kendra uh, is she's got some big hoop earrings with them. Like, I can't tell exactly if they're like, like shark tooths or something hanging from the hoop earrings. She's got very exotic earrings on that to me look like building blocks of fake idols. Like you could take those apart and yep. now obviously she would have to take those earrings off immediately. So no one saw them. So my, I just, 
as I thought about this, as I was saying the words out loud, I was like, this doesn't make sense. She couldn't use those because people would have seen them before. Uh, so I take it back, but she's got to, maybe if she takes them off immediately, if she's thinking that far ahead, she's coming to the Island, hiding a bunch of material to make fake idols. And she's just going to take it off moment one and put them in her pocket. That'd be smart. Yeah. Okay. How many idols go into circulation? I would guess there was what, like 15 on the last season? <laughs> Probably. My gut's nine. I don't know why, but as soon as you asked, I went right to nine. Nine. Okay. So that would be. So that's I mean, like... there's a bare bones minimum of three pre merge. Yeah. Like a bare bones, every tribe is going to come across one at some point. And at least one other one pre merge, at least from some sort of. Uh, it's hidden on the bench at a at a challenge or there's a journey and someone wins it or something yeah. so i'm thinking there's at least a minimum of four pre-merge and then i'm thinking post-merge there's got to be again at least like a minimum of three new ones and i think they they've had i think the last couple of seasons there's been like two different times where like two different versions of an idol that have gone to every team true i'm gonna go above you I okay. think they hit double digits and I think it's rude for me to say 10 because you said nine and be <laughs> one away. Um, so I'm going to go with 11 so that there's room for us to tie if it's 10 go. and we're equally close, but I think they hit double digits. I think they just lean all the way in and they're just like, screw it. And there's a lot of them. Um, and I think of those 11, a couple of them are fake. I think the yeah, production is not going to, not going to be done introducing their own fake idols uh, because I think there's, were executed like worked the the, yeah. the idea of them or what they could produce did work last season as far as the ones they introduced themselves in the birdcage and everything uh yeah. so i think they're they're on a little hot streak with those and they'll go with more finally then the the obvious prediction everyone has to make who wins who's in the final three who you got tony final three in winner's pick survivor 45 i got kelly jake and sabaya for my final three and I'm going to go. Don't with... do it, dude. If you, if you pick my winner's pick right now, it's gonna, can't, we can't have the same pick. Don't do it. Is it Sabaya? No. Okay. I'm going to go Sabaya. Nice. Okay. I like that pick a lot. Um, so you said Kelly, Sabaya, and Jake. Okay. Yeah. I am going to change one of mine because we had two of them the same. Um, I'm going to keep one because it is my winner's pick. Um, so I'm going to change. I had Sabaya too, but I don't want to have, uh, we can have one the same. We can't have two. That's, that's too boring. Um, so I will on the fly change from Sabaya to Julie. We're going to throw Julie in there and then we're going to have, you know, I think it could be an all female final three. So I'm going to go with Julie that. and Jay Maya and Kelly. And I think Kelly is going to win Survivor 45. Um, I was very close to picking Kelly. I It seemed like you might have been, and I was worried because I didn't want to change my pick. Because uh, <laughs> uh, obviously I didn't put a ton of thought into this, but I didn't really want to have to pick a second time. So I'm glad we landed slightly different there. So yeah, we both got Kelly in the final three. You yep. got Sabaya and Jake with her and Sabaya winning. I've got Kelly winning and sitting there with Julie and Jay Maya at the end. And those are our picks for survivor 45. So any, any final thoughts, any, any, anything else you've got to say about this season heading in? No, I mean, like, I think we have a really good mix of players and a really good mix of personalities. I have learned after watching countless seasons to never assume that I know who is going to align. So I'm very interested to see like the first two episodes to see how all of these different personalities interact on their different tribes because everybody seems to be really well distributed. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, yeah, I say final thought is just obviously hopeful keeping the expectations kind of low, as I said, a few different times, uh, both because of what I've seen so far, but also because it's the better place to be. I would rather have, I don't want to have the expectations too high. Um, yep. that's, that's not usually a recipe for anything good, but, uh, survivors, you know, it's, 
it's the second best reality competition television <laughs> show. And to most people, it's the best. And to those people, I say, you might be right. But, you know, we each have our preferences. But I love this show. I'm going to so thrilled we're going to be covering it. To anyone that is still listening at this point, I assure <laughs> you, we will not be doing three-hour recaps no, of episodes. Not at all. We will keep it a tidy 40 minutes, probably, maybe. We'll see. I always try to say how long my individual recaps are of shows, and then my challenge recaps are longer of just me by myself talking than of the actual <laughs> episodes themselves. Um, but it will, it will not be three hours, both out of respect for our time and lives and yours <laughs> as well. So, but we will be back. Uh, we do not know yet exactly what day we will be back um, each week, but we will be back each week to cover the episode after each one happens. And hopefully we'll find some sort of regular cadence. But as, as we do figure that out, we will, of course, let you know for all those who don't already definitely head over, follow, subscribe to challenge fandom. Definitely be listening over there to all things challenge. They are one of the best in the biz, a great group of folks. You should already, I'm guessing everyone already is following them um, by now, but if you're not, for some reason, uh, you've somehow listened to this podcast and ignored when I've said it before and also never come across them, go do so, go give them a follow everything. And uh, yeah, Tony, this was super fun and I look yeah, forward to covering, covering this season. Hopefully. Hopefully it's a great one, but either way, I think we'll, we'll find a way to make a great podcast content out of it. Absolutely. I'm honestly like, I'm stoked to be able to talk survivor and not feel like I'm taking away from challenge conversation because I'm the survivor guy on our podcast. So they already get it enough. <laughs> so it's nice that I can say, Hey, if you guys want to talk about survivor, you can head over to challenge historian and listen to me and Jacob go back and forth on it because here you're just gonna get a tiny snippet. Yeah, here you're just gonna get me being like, "Oh, I'm, I'm now." It's very fun. I'm now in the shoes. I'm, you know, the role reversal. I'm usually the one who is referencing a bunch of things where I'm like, "This is just normal things that like super fans know all these names and seasons and this, that, and the other." And then I have to remember, like, well, okay, not everyone is you know regular <laughs> fan of these shows that have been on for forty plus seasons. Uh, now the roles are reversed where I'm like in my head, like, okay, I guess I'm going to make a challenge reference now. Cause I don't know who Tony's talking about right here. Uh, we'll just keep it moving. So yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. Uh, make sure to subscribe and follow, uh, both here and over at challenge fandom. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back sometime next week after the premiere yes. episode with the first recap. And we will be able to run down. Uh, what we got totally right and totally wrong, but probably mostly totally wrong because we yes. just made a bunch of observations off very little info. So Tony, it's been great. Look forward to Likewise. chatting next week. Have a good one.